Yes. All right, man. We give uh, praise, esteem, and honor to the most high y'all name of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. We get to John chapter 5 and verse 39. So search the scripture in them. You think you have eternal life, and there they which testify of me, and you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of Allah in you. I come in my Abba's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor one of another? And seek not the honor that comes from Allah only. Do not think that I will accuse you. The Abba, there's one that accused you, even Moses, in whom you trust. But had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how should you believe my words? Proverbs 30 and 5. Know every word of Elohim is pure, and he is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Now, I told you what we was going to look at, and that's what we're going to do, but I want you to come over around here to Colossians chapter 3, probably about verse 12. We'll reread that yet again, and then we'll go right into uh, the matter at hand. Mm-hmm. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 12. <clears throat> you all right? You a cool nigga, ain't you? Yeah, you know. Ain't sweat, You can only answer that question. All right. He elected Allahim Kadash in love, hours of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. Forbearing one another, forgiving one another. And if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Mashiach forgave you, so also do you. And above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the Shalom of Elohim rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be you thankful. Let the word of Mashiach dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace. In your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord, Yahweh, shall give it thanks to Elohim and Abba by him. So he mentioned about singing songs and, and things of this nature. So now we chapter nine. We've been looking at a lot of stuff as it pertains to the house of Levi, and we will continue to do so. Carefully, I will not forget to grab the last two men in the book of Ezra that we have not completed from two weeks ago. Let me make sure I want to start. F, first Chronicle chapter 9, verse 1. First Chronicle chapter 9, verse 1. So all Yasharal was reckoned by genealogies, and behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Yasharal and Yehuda, who were carried away to Babylon for their transgression. Who can Rick's name mean that's sown in Babylon, who we looked at in the book of Ezra? Zerubbabel. Who recalls who Zerubbabel is and what he was responsible for? He was a priest. That was Yahusha son of Jehoshaphat. He labored with Yahusha son. Of no, he was the one who was charged with rebuilding the foundation of the house of Yahuwah. You can find him in more detail, and uh, in the book of Haggai, along with Ezra and Nehemiah. And in the book of Zechariah. Now verse 2, the first inhabitants that dwelled in their possessions in their cities, the Israelites, the priests, Levites, and Nethanims. Do y'all remember who the Nethanims are? You shaking your head like you know. What's the Nethanims, son? Nah, you were shaking your head like you know. Shaking my dreads. <laughs> that nigga said shaking my dreads. They were slaves, yes. They were temple slaves. They were temple slaves. For the Levites. That's correct. They were serving. They were temple slaves. They, they were assigned to the Levites and the priests for service in the sanctuary. They were their whole duty and, and, and job in life was to work for the Levites. Verse 3 And Jerusalem dwelt of the sons of Yehuda, the sons of Benjamin, the sons of Ephraim, and Manasseh. Uthiah, the son of Amahu, the son of Omri, the son of Emri, the son of Bani, and the sons of Perez, the son of Yemur. Now, we don't want to read all that. We're going to drop down just a tad bit and get to verse 10. That is not of a house that we care to deal with. 
and of the priests, Yedidiah, Yeroahib, Yashin, Azariah, the son of Hilkai, the son of Meshalun, the son of Zadok, the son of Maruth, the son of Athu, the ruler of the house of Elohim. Notice that you'll see Zadok. Sons of Zadok got what they got because of their service to David. There are several men in this book who are named Zadok. But this particular Zadok is why you see Zadok mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 4. Do you recall when we looked at Ezekiel 46 last night, who was the one that was leading the people in and, and, and taking them out? Who was charged with that task? According to what's written in Ezekiel 46. The prince was charged with that task. So, you know, a prince is a ruler. The high priest is a ruler of the people according to the law, but he was not the highest ruler during the time of Ezekiel. The king out, outranks the priest. If you recall, we dealt with many, many moons ago that what is, according to modern times, what would our governmental system be called? You have several governmental systems. It's not a monarchy. Uh, uh, Patriarch is a uh, Socialist. It's a socialistic theocracy. Did anybody know what a theocracy is? Theocracy is a, a governmental system that is ruled by the religious leaders. Uh, at one time, Iran was a theocracy, just being led by the Ayatollah Khomeini before they decided to be quote unquote democratic and, and elect the president and things of that nature. It's socialistic in the sense of that there was provisions for, to provide. See, there's a difference. A lot of people speak about socialism and communism, and they are not the same. The communism, the government owns all property. There's no such thing as private property in communism. You can't have private business. You can't do what you want to do. And the government distributes goods as they see for. When you look at socialism, according to the text, there were provisions in the law to provide for those who lacked. But the government or the priests or the kings could not dictate anything in private property or commerce whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? You already see that in the text. You cannot take a man's inheritance from him. When they divided them lots of that inheritance when they came in that land, that was for that particular man's family and nobody. That's, remember, who was the king that got upset because the dude wouldn't sell his land? That was Ahab. And remember, Jezebel told him, what? You the king. Why you just ain't take it? Because he can't do that. You know what I'm saying? You have to go to a person and say, can I buy that? And if he say no, ain't nothing you can do about that. There was no financial restrictions on how you conduct the business. He just told you can't charge interest to another Hebrew. And if you somebody worked for you and you had their money and you need to pay them before the sun go down. And that's it. You know what I'm saying? That's how that works. All the other stuff that we like to try to throw in there, that stuff is not in there. If you if you got rich off your labor and you who increased it, that, that was you who was prerogative. What well, you want to call you can sell your land to whoever you want to sell it to, but nobody can't come and take it from you. You know what I'm saying? Nobody couldn't come. The king, the high priest, nobody could come and take your inheritance as yours. Now, you can do what you want to with it, but nobody can't take it from you. You know what I'm saying? And there were no regulations in dealing with business. The only regulation was do not charge interest. And if you got a man's wages, pay him. You know what I'm saying? And that's it. And he told you if you had vineyards and, and olive yards and stuff like that, leave the stuff on the outer edges, don't fool with it. Let that be for the father, the widow, and, and this, that, and the third, and let him get it. And of course, you know, we had a structure of tithes and offerings and things of that nature that was brought for, and that was for those who lacked, along for the priests. All that stuff was set up and, and set for. You know what I'm saying? To have that, because he already told you. What did the law tell you? Yahoo Shah told you that the poor be with you always because the law told you that. So when people sit back and tell you why people poor, the man already told you you're going to be poor. And it's a couple of reasons. I just told you the other day about that. What he told you about sleep. Y'all know what he told you about sleep? I just told you that the other day. Because this nigga say he sleep 14 hours a day. He said poverty is something. Yeah, he said love not sleep unless you come to poverty. He said get your racket behind up, we'll go get you some money. Nigga can't get no money while you sleep. And they money in that time was to get up and go till that field. You know what I'm talking about? How that been y'all going to get tilled and you in that sleep? You know what I'm saying? How them crops going to get gathered together you in that sleep? You going to come back out there and the canker worm and the locusts, they going to be ate up the crop, now you're crying. You would have went out there, you would have been able to get them before they got them. 
You know what I'm saying? Now, mentioning that in the regards of it was not sanctioned for a man to be late. We talked about that before, right? About being slothful. The ants about gathering, you know what I'm saying? And then get your black behind up and go handle your business. Can I just tell you that other day? Shoot. Truth be told, I told that nigga that I'll shoot. 45 times this week alone. No cap. I ain't there busting his balls, but I, I'm not talking about like directly like he doing because I didn't get up and go work. I was just talking about in general. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta go handle your business. Now, whether you who will choose to increase what you doing. That's up to him. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got really nothing to do with that. And just because you increase don't mean you righteous. And just because you decrease don't mean you wicked. But I would travel just calling me about that people thinking because other people got the coronavirus that they were wicked because they got the coronavirus. I don't mean you wicked because you, you can be wicked as the day is long and never get sick a day in your life and live to be 95 and die and go to hell. Come on back over here, man. First Chronicle 9 to 10. Huh? Yeah, but they say Little Richard was uh, dealing with some work. Oh, he had. Oh, he had always speak about being against being a punk, even when he was actively punk. You know what I'm saying? Because he was raised in the church. No, he's from Georgia, man. You know, small town in Georgia. You know, ain't nothing to do with a small town in Georgia. Go watch football, go to work, and go to church. But they had a little video clip of him. Talking about keeping the Sabbath and you supposed to keep them laws and ain't what nailed to nothing nailed to the cross but Jesus. I don't know where y'all get that stuff from and things of that nature. Now, whether you who accept him or not, that's between him and you. I can't say I don't know how he lived. And I don't know where his faith is at. You know what I'm saying? But on the flip side, turn nigga turn around talking about Nipsey Hustle and have that nigga going to hell. Yeah, you can speak surely on that. Because I because with somebody and you see them and they discussing the word before they pass it, you really and listen. Especially what he was discussing, you don't know what he knew or what he didn't know. You don't know if somebody spit that gospel to him. He accepted, got baptized, and lived like that therein because he was speaking correctly. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't talking no outrageous stuff. They were basic stuff, but he was telling the truth nonetheless. First Chronicles nine and ten. He said another priest. Yeah, that yeah, read I already read that. We in verse twelve, I believe. It said, Adadiah, the son of Yeroham, the son of Pashur, the son of Micaiah and Messiah, and the son of Adiel, the son of Yezariah, the son of Meshalum, the son of Meshalith, and the sons of Emmer, and their brethren, the heads of the houses of their fathers, a thousand and seven hundred three score, very able men for the work of the service of the house of Elohim. Now, I just want you to look at this right here. He said they're very able. So if you got very able, you got Kyil. So these are strong men. So you look at very able, he's a strong man. So what would make these men strong? Well, let's turn around and look at something in Luke chapter 24, 23, pardon me. Actually, Luke 22. 22 and 27, if you will. Hey, don't come in here playing. <laughs> You got a pee? Who's the back? Luke 22 and 27. For whether is greater, he that sit at meat or he that serve. It's not he that sit at meat, but I among you is he that serve. You are they which have continued with me in my temptation, and I appoint to you a kingdom as my I have appointed unto me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Yasharal. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Hashatan have desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I pray for you that your faith fail not, and when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. Now, he said that these were strong men. He just told them to strengthen, told Peter when he get converted to strengthen his brethren. So what is that strength? Y'all should know the answer to that question. Please don't make me have to go read it. I was going to read it anyway, but I appreciate that. Isaiah chapter 26. You should have already known that. I don't know. You know, that's one of the verses that a joke. I don't need no excuse. Just need a reason. Isaiah 26 and 3. And what's the other one? Shalom, man. Strength. 
The two places in the text that speak about strength. The strength of Yahuwah, if you would. The other one is Jordan. That is correct. In the book of Nehemiah, chapter 4, verse 10, Joy and Yahuwah is your strength. And that's what we're going to be discussing because we're dealing with these saints. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. You can read verse 1. And that day shall this song be sung in the land of Yehuda. I noticed what he said to be sung, this song. So y'all remember the word for song? Not in this instance. And Raj, right? This one here is you simply, you're paired to the worship of the highest. This is a song or a song of the Levites. So we've talked about songs before. What's the song that most of y'all know? That's written in a text that says that a song, this song. The song. Yes, sir. The song most. There's another song that should be readily known. That's in the law. Now, that's not in the law. That is a song. It is in Deuteronomy chapter 32. So, so let's continue in Isaiah chapter 26. And that day, this shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. So this is what they're going to sing. We have a strong city. Salvation will Elohim appoint for walls and bulwarks. So Paul, this will bring something to your memory of what we just looked at. Well, not just looked at, but over the last of a couple months. He said that salvation would be for walls and bulwarks. So what does he mean by that? According to something that we have read in the book of Ezekiel. Specifically, Ezekiel chapter 38. I gave you the chapter. That gave you a chance to cheat on your test. Ezekiel 38. I gave you the I gave you the chapter so you could cheat on your test. In, in that verse one, he says that Allah will appoint salvation for walls and bulwarks. So what does this mean in accordance to something that you have read in Ezekiel chapter 38? Because if he's saying in this city, what city is he referring to? So now you've ascertained that. So he said salvation will be for walls and bulwarks in Jerusalem. So now in accordance to Ezekiel 38, why is salvation for walls and bulwarks? I'll give you a moment to think about it. I'm going to ask you this question. You should notice here. Is, is, is Ezekiel 38 before or after the Lord returns? It is after. So go and look at it. I gave you the, I gave you the answer to the text. I'm giving you this over for exam. I could have said no child. I gave you the chapter. Shoot, you ain't going to find the answer sitting out there. You ain't got it on your phone. <laughs> you weren't trying to do that. <laughs> See what's wrong with him? He got them zirconias in the bank. He don't never come prepared. He don't never come prepared. He prepared the day. Oh, what did he tell you about Ezekiel 38 that you would be in that door? He said, uh, do we have do we have to go read? It? No, I'm looking at it. Yeah, we got to go. <laughs> Ezekiel 38. Unwalled villages. So why is salvation for walls and bulwarks? Because there would be no need for walls and, and gates in the city because Yahuwah is your protection. Let's look at his word for salvation. Which word is used here? So of course, you know what salvation is. You got your Yahusha there. So he's telling you that this city, that Yahusha is the walls and bulwarks of this city. Shalom, Shalom. So this is this is the song that you're going to sing in that day. I just want y'all to keep that in mind and understand why that's being communicated. I'm going to read that to you again. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Yehuda. We have a strong city. Yahusha will Elohim appoint for walls and bulwarks. 
You know what I'm saying? So I want you to see that and how that correlates to what you already seen in Ezekiel 38, because it said be a city with unwalled villages. You know what I'm talking about? What did the book say he would do when Gog and Magog tried to slide? And he would cause fire to come down from heaven and devour them. That they wouldn't even have an opportunity to enter into the city. This is a song. Now, remember, why is this important that we're singing this new song? Because when you look at the text, there's certain people who sung songs. But as you finna see, there was one tribe that was appointed to singing songs, and that was the Levites. That was their job. And you're going to see who gave them that job. David gave them that job. But I want you to come over here to Revelation chapter 5. Because what priesthood are we concerned with? Priesthood of Melchizedek. We're not concerned with the priesthood of Aaron. That priesthood is polluted, according to the back book of Malachi, right or wrong. Well, let's look over here at Revelation chapter 5. We'll pick it up at verse 6. Renee. Oh. Come in here, Renee. Come here, Renee. Play. Revelation 5 and 6. And I beheld, and lo, and had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven ruachs of Elohim sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them hearts golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, you are worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for you were slain and redeemed us to Elohim out of every, by your blood, out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation, and have made us unto our Elohim kings and priests, and we shall reign in the earth. So if he done made you a priest, then you would be a priest after the order of Melchizedek. So therefore, it would be permissible you to be able to sing songs because he said you're a Kadash priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to Elohim by Yahushua HaMashiach. See, you couldn't do that before. Because remember, you had you couldn't go into the matter of fact, come on over here to uh to Hebrew chapter 9. It might be Hebrews 10, I desire. I think we read it the other day. Let me make sure. Hebrews 9 might not be what I desire. It is not. It is Hebrews chapter 10 that I desire. I desire verse 19. Hebrews 10 and 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the Kadash by the blood of Yahusha, by a new and living way which he have consecrated for us through, his, through the veil, that is to say his flesh, Having a high priest over the house of Elohim, let us all near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Now, you couldn't go into the Kadash of all under the Levitical priesthood, could you? You could not enter into that place. But based off of this man's sacrifice, you can go right in. On the Hebrews chapter 4, it ain't going to hurt nobody. 4 and 12 if you would. You don't stop. Hey. Look fine. Look like he ain't been listening. <laughs> this is how his face balled up. He looked like he ain't been listening. Bro, I ain't talking to you. And sit up straight and get your hand off your butt. He didn't look like he just got reprimanded. That's why I said that. He didn't look like he just got reprimanded. Bird, what I just asked you? What's up? <laughs> Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of Elohim is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Hey, come here. You going to conduct yourself properly today? Are you telling the truth? I would hope so. I hope to not have to call your name today. Have you behaved yourself so far today? You have. Uh, 
so the likelihood and probability of you behaving yourself now is probably small. You're a hard-headed young man. I don't know where we went wrong with you. Go sit down. For real, y'all know that boy don't listen. I don't be wanting to get crashed. That boy don't listen. Everybody in here know it too. That nigga tell you a lot. Dead to your face. He did. But he told me he was going to behave himself. I don't believe it. I hope you proved me wrong. You got in trouble before you came here today? You did. I oh, I could tell the look on your face. You had a screw face when you walked up. I definitely wasn't being funny. Y'all didn't see his face. He looked like Lee had just caught him with that karate chop. You gotta do better, son. You better than that. You hit me. You better than that. You better than that. You know that, right? You know that? Well, you gotta start acting like it then. You gotta start acting like it. He was four and twelve. For the word of Elohim is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and ruach and the joints of the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him who we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the Shamahim, Yahushua the son of Elohim, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So what is this throne of grace? Talked about it last week. That's the mercy seat. You couldn't come to the mercy seat before. Only the priest could go in there. The high priest, they're the only people who could go in there. Now everybody can go in there because the rules that remember what did we talk about John the Baptist and Yahoo Shah about on Wednesday? Who recalls what we discussed in regards to Yahoo Shah and John the Baptist? He was doing the transfer. What did he say about Yahoo Shah? He said, He that comes after me is preferred before me. Two shoes I can't unlatch, but he also said he better than me and he before me. Well, we already know from the law of the, the priesthood of Melchizedek, it's before the Levitical priesthood. We can read that in Hebrews 7, why he said Levi was still in the loins of Abraham when Abraham met Melchizedek. Now remember, John the Baptist's daddy was of who? He was the son of Aaron. You know what I'm saying? High priest. This man, that means that there could have been a point in time. And if you were permitted, John the Baptist could have been a high priest. Because that's where he come from. So our people don't understand, well, why they cousin him? Now you see why that, that has to go about. I got to give you this. Switch it over. That's why he told you. He going to increase. I got to decrease. Ain't no need to talk about no Levitical priesthood. Talk about it for what? When we talk about Levitical priesthood, you'll know your mind should go straight to what? Aaron. It's not necessarily about the Levites. The biblical priesthood is about Aaron and the high priesthood that's after the carnal commandment that pertains to that. You know what I'm saying? We don't care about that anymore. Because what does Aaron, what did Aaron do that everybody in this room gonna do one day? That's that. These people don't like to have that conversation, but yeah, you're gonna die one day. You know what I'm saying? And you'll have to deal with it. The state of the issue is not if you die, the issue is if you still alive when you die, if you understand what I'm saying. Because if you're still alive when you die, you're going to hell. You know what I'm talking about? If you're still alive when you die, that means you didn't mortify your members and mortify yourself to the world. It means you didn't live for him who died and rose from the dead for you, so you were living for yourself and not for Elohim, and you're going to hell. You know what I'm saying? If you, when you die, you're supposed to already been dead when you die. If you're alive when you die, you're going to hell. You know what I'm saying? Because you were living for yourself. No, you're supposed to die to sin to live to Allahim. So that's a different type of life. We ain't using that situation because to get that life, you had to die first. So if you was alive when you died, you're going to hell. 
Because you judge yourself under their salvation. See, I tell you that all the time. I ain't shed damn tears. Ain't gonna be upset with nobody who reject the word. That nigga done. It. What I'm mad with you for? What I'm getting sad for? Because you judge yourself unworthy to live. That's a you problem. You know what I'm saying? That's not my problem. You know what I'm talking about? And the reason why I feel that way because that's what the word say. I know what I tell you. What he told Samuel about Saul. What you crying about him for? Seeing I don't reject him. Get up and go do what I told you to do. See, that's a natural inclination because you question. Somebody you care about. Clearly, Samuel cared about Saul. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't mean that they don't understand that I'm saying there's something wrong with that. But you who are looking past that, he's not moved by emotion. So he's not looking at the fact of, oh, that was your homeboy. I asked him to do something. He did not do it. I don't fool with him. And I ain't finna shed nan tear about him. Because he didn't shed nan tear when he didn't do what I told him to do. See, that's how I see it. See, your parents ain't never shared nan tear when they put that belt on your behind when you didn't listen. See, that's why I be talking to him like that. Because, see, he don't listen. He set himself up to get chastised. Why get chastised when you don't have to? Make your life easy. You know what I'm saying? See, we were talking about this other day. When I was a jet man, some of my homeboys ain't want to listen to their people. They would run away. I'd be like this here. I said, you know what? My mama feed me and keep a roof cut. I'm going to the house. All that being big and bold, I don't want to listen. I don't do what I want to do. No. I got a nice bed. You know what I'm talking about? It might not be the greatest food all the time, but we eat. You know what I'm talking about? And you want me to come around here and go to this nigga house and this nigga house and nigga, you knocking on my door talking about you can get some fiddles. You smell like last week. I'm straight on that. Because I ain't got to come out here and do all I got to do is just listen to what my mama telling me to do. That freedom that you trying to entice me with is it's not enticing considering the fact that I'm going to be on the street. I don't know how I'm going to eat, which means that's probably going to lead me to commit crime. I mean, I'm going to have to go to jail and be in a room with a bunch of niggas. I'm going to stay to the house and eat these sweet, uh, sweet Swiss rolls. You know what I'm saying? Drink the water, vacuum this car. You know what I'm talking about? Go pick them up enough from school and be in the house when she tell me to be in the house. It's just that simple. You know what I'm talking about? For real, though. But some of y'all, y'all was like, you know, you were hot to try. You thought you were grown. You want to go and run up out the house. You should have stayed your black behind at the house. You might not grow up with friends like that. Some of my friends jump out there in the streets. They ain't want to listen. They ain't want to follow no rules. You know what I'm talking about? Then the niggas out there dolo looking stupid. After you can, they spend a night at your house. Nigga, you 16 years old, nigga. Why you want? Man, she be tripping. What was she told you? I got to be in the house at 1030. Well, nigga, go home at 1030 then, nigga. <laughs> Straight up and down. You just don't want to do what you told. Dude, I'm going home, nigga. You know what I'm talking about? Who? We're going to follow these rules, huh? I ain't got no money. You know what I'm talking about? I, I ain't but 15, 16. I ain't got no money. I can't pay no rent. Nigga, I wasn't even thinking about selling dope. Most of them niggas on my way to be one bro. So that joint wasn't enticing. You know what I'm saying? Why get out here to sell some rock? This nigga ain't got no car. This nigga be in the projects every day, ain't got no car. Don't get me wrong. It was some nigga running away that would get money, but you ain't see them. You just seen the nigga standing outside every day buying 10 rocks. Talking about he banned. Broke nigga. Now why I be getting on you about that? You gotta be careful that that broke nigga talk. You don't wanna be messing around with no that broke nigga talk. And then you be a broke nigga. And being broke ain't got nothing to do with how much money you got in your pocket. You gotta do it the way you think. How you view life. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is when you're talking about broke niggas. Like, like the dude in the video be talking about when the niggas be like, oh, nigga, come see me. Come fight. See that broke nigga talk. Somebody who's getting some money and doing something productive. They ain't got time to come back and forth arguing with you. You know what I'm saying? That broke nigga talk. That's the nigga, he ain't got nothing going on with his life but to go back and forth and want to get physically violent with another person. Somebody who's doing something, got something to do, it don't got to be financial. I got a job to go to. I got a business to run. I got kids to tend to. I got a wife to see about. I ain't got time to be fooled up with you and put my freedom and my life at risk and put the people who depended on me at, 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 a, at a disadvantage. The fool son to this broke bastard right here ain't going to do it. The same thing that Nehemiah told the people when he was building that wall. What I look like coming down off this wall and I'm doing a great work. You got to come up here to me. I'm not coming down here to you. See, that sounds arrogant to people because the nigga don't want to fool with you because you want some other type of time. That's your problem. That's not my problem. You understand? That's why I said all that to get you back to the thought process of Nehemiah. Did Nehemiah say I'm going to come by here for a joke? I'm doing something. A great work. 
If you want to come holler at me, you got to elevate your mindset to come up here to meet me. Because I'm not coming down here to meet you. And that's how you had to view life in every area. What you lowering yourself down for? What you dumbing yourself down for? I ain't never did that. I'm being on the pin don't never dumb it down. You know what I'm saying? Dumb it down for what? You know why you worry about dumbing it down? You know why you worry about being lax and compromising the word? Because you want to feel like you can bring more people in. You ain't bringing nobody in. Man, screw that thing. Lord told you what? Let the blind lead the blind. And if they both be blind, they all going to fall in the ditch. He said, leave them alone. He said, if they don't want to accept your testimony, cut your feet off on them and go about your business. When Paul said, oh, y'all judge yourself unworthy of salvation, I'll take it to the Gentiles. They'll listen to it. See, that's when you know what you're doing is silent. I've been told about this. As a man, you shouldn't need validation from nobody if you know what you're doing is right. I don't need your validation. I know what it is. No, well, you wasn't right. No. We talked about that, though, right? When did you ever see Yahuwah or any prophet or Yahoo shot walking around seeking to get validation from other people? When you ever seen them do that? He said, I know my work good. I'll uh, use a serpent. Well, let me be one then. But if, I, if I'm a serpent and I did this, then what your children do with I? Let that be the judge. Um, and he, and he, and did you know what I'm saying? And you have to see that. That's when you know that what you're doing is correct. You don't have to do that. We good people try to call. Come on back to us. Uh, See, that's why people get kicked out. The kid don't get left out in that kingdom. They don't want to listen. So you got to understand something. Yahuwah is the father of the house. Then we read this. Guess what? If you're going to dwell in the house of Yahuwah, it's rules in that house. So you're not going to come in that man's house and do what you want to do. See, that? put this example. This is not best with you. Let me that example. When she seen that baby powder, she like, oh, Lord, what is that? See, that's how Yahuwah look at it when you come up to the threshold of his door. Oh, you think you're going to walk in here and muddy up my flow? What if you had white carpet and a nigga walked in with muddy shoes and walked on your carpet? How would you feel? Now imagine how Yahoo Shah feels if you think you're going to come up here with all manner of fornication, idolatry, malice, spitefulness, backbiting, violence, maliciousness, uh, rebellion, unbelief, and you think you're going to walk in his house and sit in here and lay down and go to sleep. And when he tell you, oh, no, we don't do that here, and y'all should already know that from the book of Kings. What happened when the people came in the land and they didn't know the custom of the God of the land? What happened to him? He son lies at him. You ain't going to live here and do this here, nigga. You're going to get your mind right and you're going to get up out of here. You should already know that because we in Florida having this conversation. You're not at your house. you at somebody else's house. And you mad because you got to follow their rules. But you ain't want to follow the rules at your own daddy's house. You's a hell of a nigga. You know what I'm saying? You ain't want to listen at your daddy's house. He kick you out. You got to move with somebody else's house. You don't want to listen to them either. So I tell you, that's feminine activity. You know what little girls like to say. You're not the boss of me, and that's how you feel. Ain't nobody the boss of you. You do what you want to do, but claim this man at the same time. That's not how that works. That man say, clean that room, nigga. Get your, get your behind up and clean that room. When he say, clean that room, he talking about sweep that heart out. Clean that room. You want me to come live with you, but your heart filthy. I'm not coming to live here. Ain't that what he said? If you do his words, he'll manifest himself to you and come to hell with you. Ain't that what he told you? But you're going to have to do it if you do his words. Guess what his words going to do? Clean in. See, you ain't cleaned your house. You ain't bought the floors. You ain't cleaned the bathtub. You ain't washed up. You ain't cleaned out the sink. You ain't cleaned nothing in the kitchen. You ain't did nothing. You got 10 years worth of grease in the stove. You know, you see that stuff in there. You see the people's stove. Like this here. Grown women in here. Why your stove look like this? You know what I'm talking about? Why your house look like that? What's wrong with you, huh? That's how he look at you. What's wrong with you? Don't nobody like this here. You ain't got up and did nothing. You ain't flipped. You ain't flipped no sofa cushion. You ain't vacuumed the carpet. You ain't did nothing. First Chronicle chapter. I ain't being fun. I'm being dead serious. I'm being dead serious. You're going to dwell in that man's house. You got to do it right. You got to keep it tight. You don't want to do it. He'll get, he'll get you out of there. Chapter 9. Make sure I'm right where I need to be. Because we got a lot of men that do Paul. So. What did I stop at? Verse 13. Verse 13. 
Yeah, you're very able man. That's the last person did. Yeah. yeah. So remember, these are strong men. So when you're dealing with somebody who's a strong man, you know what I'm saying? What you got to do? If you're dealing with a strong man, what you got to do? It's for if it's dealing with the word. I mean, that's a man of that's a man of faith. I didn't even read all of Isaiah 26. Hold on. Definitely did. Isaiah 26 and 3. He said, you will keep him in perfect shalom whose mind has stayed on you because he trusts in you, trust you and Yahuwah for forever, for in Yahuwah is everlasting strength. So these are strong men because they believe in you. See, you're not a strong man if you don't believe in you. You might think you are, but you're really not. You know what I'm saying? That's why he say when you convert it, strengthen your brother. Do you make him strong? It's by, by the words of faith. But see, this is the thing, right? What did we talk about the other day, a couple weeks ago? You know, exercise yourself in godliness because godly exercise profit is little. So the exercise means that's to put into action. So you just can't have the faith but don't put it into action. And putting the action in, in the faith ain't just I keep the Sabbath and I don't eat no pork chop. You know what I'm saying? That's a simplistic way of thinking. That's a way to get out of there and you know that you've been you've been bitch pressing 95 pounds for six months and you're scared behind don't want to put more weight on the bar. You know what I'm talking about? Put some weight on the bar, nigga, and lift that. That's your problem. See, that's what you like to do, Andy. You like to go in there and play with the weight. Though. You like to go in there and play with No. No. You ain't moving no weight. You, know what I'm saying? you moving heavy weight, all right, but you ain't moving no weight in that gym. See? <laughs> Get at your mouth. You know that. You know. You know. After a while, right? If you're gonna use the same uh, comedic line, it has to be a little better than what you're talking about. I mean, I'm just saying. You talking about a haircut, but right now you have window glass in your ear. And you're trying to tell us that's a precious stone. But all you did was go to somebody's house and get their coffee table and cut it up and put it in your ear. <laughs> Dude, that nigga needs Jenny Craig and Weight Watchers. What are you talking about that? <laughs> Weight Watchers point. Let me leave this nigga alone. Because I'm hot and I'm sweating. That nigga was sweating when he woke up this morning. You know what I'm saying? That nigga woke up, saw the sheets was brown. He thought he was dirty. It was really great. I'm going to leave him alone. He be warm and raving. He ain't got no material. You need to get an haircut. Come on, man. You got to come better than that. I, I tell him that every time, too, though. You ain't no professional. The niggas ain't rank where you from. You told me for years, them niggas rank where you from. Them niggas don't practice. Because you would be better than that. You would be nicer than that. Maybe yeah, you used to cracking them corny jokes with the Lars and Tommy. That wasn't that dope here. That was that. We still love you. You know I'm against you. I, yesterday I was going to do it. Yeah. You know you my nigga though. He going to be thinking of good. I, 45 minutes. My nigga pull that out. That I got that food here, bro. That's what he's going to try to do. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to do. Come on here, verse 12. Man. <laughs> First Chronicle chapter 9, verse 12. <laughs> and Adadiah, the son of Yeroham, the son of, oh, we were verse 14. Too. And of the Levites, Shemaiah, the son of Heshu, the son of, uh, as, of Arezakam, the son of Heshbaba, the son of Moriah, and uh, Bacabacar, and Heresh, and Galal, and Madaniah, the son of Micaiah, the son of Zechariah, the son of Asaph. Are y'all familiar with Asaph? You see his name in all the songs all the time. Now, his name means gather. You remember that, that man that we read in the beginning of Proverbs 30 and 1? Name means gather. These are the sons of Asaph, or the chief singers, as you're about to see. 
Obadiah, the son of Shemaiah, the son of Galal, the son of Jedathon, and Bechariah, the son of Asa, the son of Elkanah, that dwelt in the village of the Nephites. And the porter. Do y'all know what a porter is? The gatekeepers. They keep the door. Hey, hey. The porters were Shalom, Aku, Talmon, Ahaman, and their brethren Shalom was chief. So now we're going to stop and we're going to look at each one of these men. Now, Shalom, clearly that's this. That is retribution. Retribution. You got Sean, Lamar, Ooh, and me. But this man's name means retribution. So retribution is at the gate. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm ahead of myself. Give me a second. You got a coup. This is insidious. Y'all know what insidious means? You know what it means? No, I'm not being fun of masses. Seriously, that's not a that's not a commonly used word. Insidious. Yeah, insidious uses something that's evil, something that's uh a little sly. No, I wasn't busting your balls on that one. That's not a commonly that's not a word you hear in, in the regular course of conversation. You have Talmud, which is oppressor. You have Akamon, which is my brother is a gift. And of course, Shalom was cheap. So retribution was the head. Now, what do you think you get from that when you look at retribution, oppressor, and insidious, and my brother is a gift? And these are the, the keepers of the gate. And Shalom was the chief one. Yeah, retribution. Shalom ain't necessarily the one that's wrong. Let me show you why I say that. Ask chapter three. Yeah, not even really wrong when you look at what it means. This point, you got somebody who's an oppressor and one that's in cities. You know what I'm saying? And these are the ones who guard the gates. And so the next thing we were talking about earlier, what they be? Oh, they were doing whatever the Levi told them. Okay, so they doing something Oh, couldn't nobody go in there but the high priest. Even the Levites couldn't go in there. They had to stop at the veil. But like he told you, when the, when the earthquake hit, Shalom, when the earthquake hit, when he when when he died, what happened? It rent the veil. So the veil gone. So there's nothing to stop you from, from coming in. You know what I'm saying? Anybody can enter in. Now, see that this is the difference. See, you can enter into that throne, but if you want worthy, you're going to pay. And see, that's the thing. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing. Hold on. Hey, bird. Put this in the trash. Thank you, sir. Acts chapter three. I'm in chapter four. That ain't going to help nobody. Three and eighteen. He said, But these those things which Allah has showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Mashiach should suffer, he has so fulfilled. Repent you therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of repression shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Yahusha Hamashiach, which was before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution. Of all things which Elohim has spoken by the mouth of all his Kadash prophets since the world began. So you know that there's going to be a time of retribution. But see, we can look at retribution in a twofold fashion. I want you to come to Revelation 18. Because you can look at the retribution and the fact that he's going to repay people back who sent us. But then he also said that he would repay back his righteous people. Matter of fact, not Revelation 18, Revelation 11. 11 and 15. What? He didn't say that was your payment. He just said in my father's house there's many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. If it wasn't so, I wouldn't have told you. Your pay, your retribution is everlasting life, not a mansion. Mm -hmm. That's what he paid you. Well, no, you think of a mansion in the fashion of what you're thinking in common times. 
He's just telling them that there's a house prepared for you. That's what he was trying to convey. Like a physical or no, he's just telling them. He's saying, I've, 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 the same way that he prepared a lot of inheritance. For your forefathers before they came out of Egypt to dwell in the land, he was telling them, I have a place prepared. And I'm going to come back and receive you. And you're going to come dwell with me. I am. Simple as that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he got to use descriptive terms. But I just tell you, I got a place prepared for you. What does that mean to you? Because we can look at the word and Greek can tell you what it means. Because I don't think they have mansions like you have mansions now. You looking for a 10 bedroom palatial estate? What would you need a 10 bedroom? I'm not, and I'm not being funny. Like, what would you need a 10 bedroom house? To chill to do what? You flesh and, and, and you're not flesh and, flesh and both? You can't pee? You can't do do. You ain't got no need for sleep. You ain't even got no need for food. What you need a house for? This is what it means so that you can know the Greek word for mansion is mona. It means a staying, a abiding, a dwelling place, a man's abode, metaphorically, the Ruach dwelling in belief. That boy, that wow. But that's a, another point of what I was referring to on. You can't always look at what that's saying in English for face value and run with that because it could have you out of pocket. Correct. You know what I'm saying? The dwelling place in the bowl, you know, you were asking, are those mansions esteemed bodies? Yes. Just like what we were talking about last night. Nigga, so worried about a bloodline, son. You polluted that bloodline many, many, many moons ago. You put this body off. You putting off the nature of Abraham. And putting on the nature of Elohim. What I'm worried about a bloodline for. You know what I'm saying? To a certain extent. You know what your bloodline is, but what I'm worried about that for. That's the same token that every time something happens. Us black people need to come together. The lies you tell. I burn hell for I come together with a bunch of idolaters. You know what I'm saying? In the name of blackness, I've said it once, I'll say it again. The word of Elohim is not a black power movement. It is not. It's not black power. It is Elohim power. And it's the salvation that comes from the power of the gift of the Ruach HaKadosh. They don't come together. It's a lot of niggas going to come together. You're going to kill them all. But what did he tell you he was going to do? Send his Malachim through, his, through the earth and take out all things that offend? You think he's going to stop? Oh, he's black. I'm going to let him stay there. He like to touch the truth. He like to lie. He like to steal. But they black, so I'm going to leave. No. He ain't going to do none of that. He going to judge everybody accordingly. If you're contrary to the word, he's not sparing. You dying, you dying, you dying, you cool, you dying. That's how he going. You know what I'm saying? See, them niggas know. See, y'all don't know. See, I knew he know it. I should have known you know that too. You know what I'm talking about? That's a good movie, man. That's a good piece of cinema. It is a good movie. because it's a, it's a stoner movie, so it's hilariously funny because they hot. So they tell crazy jokes. No, Soul Pain was, it was hard to watch. You can watch half fake and be entertained. No, I can't watch it. I can't watch it. What's so funny? Well, praise the Lord. Revelation 11 and 15. Praise the Lord. Super stupid. You seen it too? Yeah, yeah, that's two hours you can't get back. That means a high night we eat, and he died. He was he never on the show. Revelation 11 and 15. 
And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our of Yahuwah and of his Mashiach. He shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders were sat before Allahim on their seats, fell upon their faces, and worshiped Allahim, saying, We give thanks, O Yahuwah Allahim Almighty, which are and was and are to come, because you've taken you great power and has reigned. And the nations were angry, angry. Your wrath has come. And the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that you should give reward unto your servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear your name, small and great, and should destroy them, which destroy the earth. So he's gonna give you a reward. What he told you in Luke, it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Come on back over here to uh the Chronicles. Hey, children, children, y'all make a little too much noise. You were reading it, you wouldn't you wouldn't have it a means to take it. So that's when you look at the retribution. Now I'll give you the strict uh Webster's definition of insidious. It's something that is done in a gradual and subtle way with harmful effects. So it means to be God, to be uh to be deceived. So you have that. So you got one person who's guarding the gate. So you got somebody who's guarding the gate whose name means for Kyle. So we're going to look at it in this fashion. I need you to come to Psalm 101. And then I need you to come to Revelation 21. Just on the back of I know it's going to be redundant with Psalms 101 and Revelation 21. But forgive me for that. We need to prove it. Psalms 101 ain't long, so we'll read the whole thing. Because part of this goes back to of what he's allowing to stand at the gate. You got retribution at the gate. So anybody who's contrary to the word, they can't enter into the gate because they're the gatekeeper. So if he has to pay back retribution to you, you can't get in. You know what I'm saying? Then you got insidious or those who are deceitful or who beguile, they can't get in. Let's continue. Psalms 101. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto you, O you who will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when you, will you come unto me, I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave, not cleave to me. A forward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. Who so privily slander his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that have I look in a proud heart, will not, I, will not I suffer. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walk in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He that work deceit shall not dwell within my house, and he that tell lies shall not tarry in my sight. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all the wicked doers from the city of Yahuwah. So he's telling you about you, and the first thing he told you is, no liars or insidious people are coming in, and this is the first job the Talmud to keep you from coming in here. But the other one was oppressed. So then we have to look at oppressor and see who it is that he's going to keep out in that regard. Because that's what gatekeepers do, right? They guard the gates. So if you don't use the profile, you can't come in. Matter of fact, before we read Revelation 21, Revelation 22 and 12. You can make it 22 and uh. You can make it 22 and 6. One of the one of the biggest things that people sit back and look at, right? <clears throat> Remember Yahushua told you to watch. Because he also told you to guard your heart. Or you need to guard the gates of your heart. Meaning guard your heart, guard your eyes, guard your ears, guard your spirit. And don't allow those things to enter in. Because who is not letting that stuff come in his city, whether you want to accept it or not. You know what I'm saying? People tell you a whole lot of things. And they have you on the outside looking in, looking stupid. When you go to knock on that door and he look out the window, I'm about to depart from me. You work with iniquity. I never knew you. Who is you knocking on my door? You know what I'm saying? And see, he ain't going to shoot you like some people talk about doing. He just going to look right at you and be like, bro, I don't know you, bro. I don't know why you knocking on the door. 
Oh, you know me? I did that. I don't know you, God. We already discussed that a few weeks back. With your name being written in heaven. The man said, well, I don't know you, cuz. I had everybody who had a reservation to be here. And your name is not on the guest list. And them porters at them gates. Because then we just read about porters last night to see you 46. Are they supposed to be guarding them gates? You're not getting in there. He's not letting you in there. Oh, thank you for sharing. Okay. 22 and 6, book of Revelation. And he said unto me, these are the faith, these things are faithful and true. Who Allah, he was the Kadash prophet, sent his Malachim to show unto his servants the things which must be shortly done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keep the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the Malachim, which showed me these things. Then he said unto me, see you do it not. I am your fellow servant of your brethren, the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship Allah, he. He said unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is kadash, let him be kadash still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I'm the Aleph and the Ta, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. And they may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, and whosoever loves and make a lie. See, that's the thing that you always used to mention, which is not what you came up with. The Jews used to come with that flat earth stuff. That's how they would try to manipulate people into participating in that debate. Oh, you love and you make it a lie. But guess what, though? We just talked about this the other day. If you're a hypocrite, according to the text, what are you? You're a liar. So you think he's sitting there talking about somebody who don't even want the earth look like? Because at the end of the day, you're going by it. If you perceive the text to tell you it's flat, then he perceives it to be that he believes it's round. Who's actually lying? Because to lie, you have to be willfully deceiving. See, you can tell lies, and then that's why we tell y'all to kind of say what? You who are with it. Don't tell a nigga you coming through the house, and then you don't call because you lied. You didn't intend to lie, but that's what you did because you said you were going to do something, and you didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? So that's why you say you who are willing because that at that point, that come to pass, I ain't shot you no lie. You know what I'm saying? But you got some people, we done talked about it, they volunteer lies. They can shoot you one and even ask you for that lie. You know what I'm saying? You could have kept that lie to yourself. But then you got people who lie for the purpose of deceiving. See, you have some people that lie when they're scared. So when you was a little kid, your mama asked you, did you eat all them cookies? You lied and said you didn't eat all them cookies. The cookie bag is in your room. She done already seen it. You got crumbs on the floor, but you're scared because you know you're going to get whooped. You might have not got whooped if you told the truth. You probably still were going to get whooped, but your chances of skating by might have been high if you just would have told the truth. So you lie because you were scared. But then you got a specific type of lie like Satan. They come in with the purpose of deceiving. And they know they lie before they tell it. You know what I'm talking about? And those are the people who are don't fool with. Because what did he say to anybody who's a false? Like, being a false witness, that's a lie. If you say this nigga stole son, but you ain't see him steal it. That's what, remember I was telling you about that? Like, I can't, I ain't saying you lying. But if I jump on there and say, I, you, I, see, do this and do that, I'm bearing false witness. I did not see that. You know what I'm saying? That's what I mean when I be telling you that. I'm not saying you're lying. But I don't have another witness. So I can't say that it's fact. All I can say is a legend. You know what I'm talking about? Even with stuff that, like what I was telling you the other day. Just because somebody tell you that somebody did something, if you don't know that they did it, or there's not two or three witnesses to bear witness that they did it, then you have to say a legend. That way you're not lying on nobody. You're not bearing for a witness. What did the law tell you not to do? To not be quick to run to a multitude with evil telling lies. See, that's what they did to Mashiach. They were quick to run. Ain't nobody know nothing about that. And that he, did. he did it. He did it. He did it. See, that's how you keep yourself clean. See, you got people, they love to lie. Some people, whole life is a lie. You know what I'm saying? Whole life. I'm trying to think of somebody famous who whole life is a lie. To all of them. Somebody most famous. I can't recall. But his life wasn't no lie though. Because niggas knew that he was fraudulent. 6'9. Niggas knew 6'9 wasn't no gangster. 
Oh. It was entertainment. Uh, T.I. T.I. Like, like, in what regard? In what regard? Because, uh, because <laughs> T.I. was a brother. He got caught with rocket lunches. And he only did one year in jail. That don't mean his life is a lie. That means he's plugged. You don't know that he's snitched. Again, you don't know that. Because if you get locked up, I've been locked up. If you tell them you're going to be in somebody's paperwork. You're going to be in some, I'm talking about county. Well, sit there and think about how he get one year. He, think about it. Sit back and Okay. So sit back and think about it, bro. Think about it. Use your mind for a second. This thing is a celebrity. So that means that somebody owns his black behind. And if I don't want your black behind locked up for the narrative that I'm trying to push, then I can get you out of that. But you may have to do some strange things. You might have, and that doesn't mean homosexual things. That means they're ritual. See, we don't discuss this here. See, this is my thing. I be telling you, stop running up folks to stuff that you don't have to, to command over the information. Because you know this nigga is a deity, uh, a worshiper of the deity of Paul. This is known. This is apparent. This is seen. So don't you think if I worship Paul and certain people worship Paul and I know other people who worship Paul that they can't make a phone call and say, look out for my nigga? What I just told you yesterday. It ain't what you know. It's who you know. If you know certain people, it can get you out of certain things. See, you don't know nobody. So ain't nobody going to come get you if you get caught with a rocket launcher. But if you know some people, nigga can get, get your time cut down. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, bro, except with the Fed, you can't buy a Fed case. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. But so okay, I'm real easy. See, clearly, see, you're not a criminal. When I say you're not a criminal, meaning that you didn't really go to court. So what you don't understand about going to court is just because you get charged with an offense does not mean that that offense is what you're going to be convicted of. So that means they could give you a lesser offense to have a downward departure in your time. See, I went to trial and I got charged with sale of cocaine a thousand feet of school and possession with intent to sell cocaine a thousand feet of school. I went to trial. I lost. The jury didn't come back with a, a conviction for possession with intent to sell a thousand feet of a school because they had an option to convict me of a lesser charge. and It was just regular possession of cocaine. See, that's how that works. But the average person does not know that. That's how you can see a dude, how he got 10 years for murder. Because they dropped that charge down. Might have gave him manslaughter. Because in the Florida, there is no such thing as aggravated assault. I mean, attempted murder. It's aggravated assault. You know what I'm saying? So you can shoot somebody. You're not going, they can drop that aggravated assault down to a battery. They do this all the time. See, in the state of Florida, first degree murder is a natural life sentence. We don't have parole here. So when you get an elbow, you go for life. So they give you second degree murder, which means that can go from zero to life. And I can give you 10 years. You know what I'm saying? You have to be informed on things. We don't be informed. See, that's why black people be messed up and we be quick to talk and don't be knowing what we be talking about. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about our people as a whole. We are, we're probably the least informed people on the face of the earth that do the most talking. You know what I'm saying? And don't know what you're talking about. That sounds like some whole junk. That would have sound like. That would hold them. You know what I'm saying? Sit around talking and don't know what they be talking about. That's what that's what women and little kids do. Because a grown man ain't supposed to do that. You know what I'm saying? Grown man supposed to know what he's talking about. If you don't know what he's talking about, he keep his mouth closed. Mm -hmm. So you know till they know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? The only reason I say that because not all women, but if you go in the hood, you're going to have about 10, 15 hoes sit in the house, tapping their gums, and don't know what they're talking about. And then that information get out, and then that junk run around, and everybody is repeating some information from 10 people who didn't know what they were talking about. And then little boys sit there, and they watch the women who do that, and then they grow up, and they do the same thing. And I get that, but I said, that's some old Nah, hey, what? That's a, that's a feminine attribute. Men speak on what they know, and they know what they speak. And if they don't know, they keep their mouth closed. Period. You know what I'm saying? That's not a masculine trait. Just don't see. But I was taught that as a kid. Don't talk about what you don't know. 
because you're going to run across somebody who do know, and they're going to make you look like a fool. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to walk up to me and tell him about no dog going uh, no engine. I don't know nothing about no car. Now, what I look like, see, it's, it's your star, it's your carburetor. And they walk up, what ain't nothing wrong with me? It's you. And you feel bad. You want to beat him up because you ain't know what you were talking about. Now, he done made you look stupid in front of these people because you ain't know what you were talking about. Beat yourself up. Well, you know how many people have been killed out here behind stuff like that, bro? And somebody was sitting around talking and somebody directing them behind that and now they want to beat the person up and shoot them because they embarrassed? You shouldn't have done that. Back to the first chronicles, man. Why you think they got mad at the scribes, got mad at the Lord? Every time, what did he tell them in Matthew 22? You do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of Elohim. How many times did he go around there and the people was hot? Because they didn't know what they was talking about, he did. They want you. You know that they were envious of the man because they wanted to do what he could do, and all they had to do was humble themselves, and he would have taught them how to do it. Because what did he tell them in John fourteen? Greater works than these that you see me do, that you'll do. But they didn't want to do the work. They didn't trust Elohim. They didn't have the patience and the humility to allow this man to teach them because they felt like we scribes and priests. I don't need to listen to him. And that's why they stood out there and said, let me get a murderer over Allahim. You know how evil you got to be to choose. Remember, remember when we talked about that? Who remember what Barabbas' name is? You remember what Barabbas' name is? You remember this guy? Son of my father. And what was Barabbas? What was his offense? He was a murderer. He was a rebel. And he was a thief. And what did Yahusha tell you that Satan was? A liar and a thief. And he didn't abide in the truth from the beginning, so he was a rebel. Choosing Barabbas again, they're going to choose the beast who's the son of his father because the serpent gave him his power and he's a thief, he's a murderer, and he's a rebel. And they're going to do it all over again. You know what I'm saying? Ain't all over again. <laughs> Come on back to first chronicle chronicle now. That's why we be going through this stuff so you can know so you can be up on A. Like I just seen one of my big homies yesterday. I ain't seen him about, about 15 years since the nigga tried to kill him out east years ago. You know what I'm saying? Caught my dog down bad, lit him up with that yacht. I put a grace in you. Oh, he's still here. You know what I'm talking about? I had seen him after he got hit. Boy, he was lifting and all. That boy's still here. You know what I'm saying? And some of that type of stuff. That I'm telling y'all, that's what they used to do to us. I'm going to put you up on game now. I'm not going to put you up on game when you go through the situation. I'm going to try to give you the game before you even face it. So when you face it, you already know what to do. So if you do it, if you do opposite of what I told you to do, like I was telling you before, I'm not going to feel sorry for you. Now, I'm going to correct you. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to feel sorry for you. Because I already gave you the game. You stubborn. What did Yahushua tell you? I told you before. He done gave you the game. So what don't so don't get upset if he look at you and be like, I don't care. I, I took my time to show you and to tell you so you wouldn't have to go through that. Why are you stupid? See, again, like I told you, most people have not been disciplined and corrected by a man. So when you get that discipline from a man that just offends you because your mama coddled you and she pats you on your head and she tell you it's all right, a man going to look you in your face and say you a stupid nigga. Now, I love you. Come give me a hug, son, but you a dummy. Go sit in your room and think about how stupid you are. You know what I'm saying? That's what he going to do after that. He's going to sit down and show you why you were stupid. See, he's going to be harsh with you, and then he's going to sit down and show you why you shouldn't do that again. But all you're going to get caught up on is your emotions that he told you you were stupid. But you were stupid. Because you had the truth and you chose to believe a lie. So what does that make you? That makes you stupid. No, that makes you stupid. Reprobate is when you do not retain Elohim in your knowledge. When you're stupid, you know what's right, but you believe lies. See, when you're dumb, you don't know nothing. When they say dumb dogs can't bark, you don't know nothing. Meaning you can't talk. When you're talking, you know what you're talking about. But when you stupid, you were told, but I want to go over here and do this. That makes you stupid. See, your mama not going to tell you you're stupid because you her baby. Your daddy going to look at you. 
come to me to go in your room and think about how dumb that was. You know what I'm saying? And when you're not accustomed to that, you're going to be offended. You know what I'm saying? I told you I was disciplined by a man for the first 10 years of my life. So to be disciplined by a man does not offend me. To be rebuked. I grew up with niggas who was older than me that would tell me about myself. So that's not going to offend me. But if you've never been disciplined or rebuked by a man, 99.9% .9 of the time you So you have subconsciously, you don't have that level of respect for masculine authority when it comes, regardless of who it is. You know what I'm saying? You don't gotta be no, no your brother, your daddy, police, or whatever. I see a black man anywhere that's older than me, he automatically get respect because he's a man. I have respect for him as a man. If you weren't raised to have respect for black men, you're not going to have it when they come through. Because men are not gentle with you when you out of pocket. Yeah, they'll give you a hug later, but I'm going to crash your head right now. What you seen the Lord do when he resurrected from the dead and his apostles was unbelievers? Did he say, oh, why y'all like this? Did he not go off on them? He went off on them. But then what did he do after he went off on them? He blessed them boys. He liked this here. He still showed the compassion and the gentleness. I got to be sharp with you off the top because you a man. And you ought to be better than that. I say we're not accustomed to that. How many of y'all had a man regularly get on your behind from your childhood on up? So you're not accustomed to that. My granddad ain't played. No, you understand? None. Oh, he was going to be respected. Oh, you were going to catch these hands. You know what I'm saying? Period, point blank. You're going to do what I ask you to do when I ask you to do it. I don't want to hear nothing about it. When you wrong, I'm going to tell you you're wrong. And then I'm going to tell you, come here, dude, and come give me a hug because you're my boy. But you out of pocket. You know what I'm saying? First Chronicle chapter 9. Why well, stop? Oh, the other one. So you have oppressed. Now we'll have to do that in the bridge version because I need to move along. Uh, in Acts chapter 10, what did it say Yahusha went about doing? Healing everybody that was oppressed, right? We're in First Chronicles chapter 9. We're back in verse uh, 17. Joy. Come on, Andrew. Thank you. He told you that he went about healing everyone who was oppressed of the devil, right? Mm -hmm. What does the book tell you in Ecclesiastes that oppression surely does? Mm -hmm. How many times you've seen Yahushua walking around being upset because those people were being oppressed of the devil? So in, now, what did he also tell you in Ezekiel 22 that the priests were out here doing? They were oppressing the people. Didn't Yahushua tell him that to tell you that they were oppressing the people as well? That they were putting heavy burdens on them that they wouldn't live? You know what I'm saying? And things of this nature. So people who like to oppress, he's standing at the gate not to let you in. And then you got the last one that's guarding the gate, right? That's Akamon. Do you remember that is? My brother is a gift. Now, who is your brother? Your brother would be Yahusha. What is the gift? The gift is his blood. His blood turns to the Ruach if you believe and obey him. And those who my brother is a gift they are able to enter into that gate. Remember, these are gatekeepers. The only people who get in is the ones who got that gift. Because he told you in Romans chapter 8, if you don't have the Ruach of Mashiach, then you are what? None of his. You don't belong to him. You're not of that family lineage. You understand? Let's continue. We in verse 18. He said, who there too waited in the king's gate eastward? They were the porters and the companies of the sons of Levi. Shalom, the son of Korah, the son of Esabath, the son of Korah, and his brethren of the house of his father, the Korahites, were over the work of the service, the keepers of the gates of the tabernacle, and their fathers being over the host of Yahuwah, were keepers of the entry. Now, I know who this is, right? The Korahites, you know who that father is, right? Who is that? The Korahites? Yeah, who is that? Oh, I don't know. Who knows who the Korahites are? Them, no, that's Korah's son. You know who Korah is? Oh, I'm not You know who Korah is? You don't know who Korah is? 
Who in here don't know who Korai is? Come on. Hold on. I'm going to give you the meaning of that name first and foremost. His name means crier. His name means crier. And you got Kuf, Rosh, and you got Ali. Now, of course, they got to mention here the ancestor of Shalom, one of the chief porters, and a, a, a Levite of the son of Enon in the reign of, of Hezekiah. Now, this ain't the Korah. The other Korah, the other Korah is in the book of Numbers. And that was the one who rebelled. You know about Korah who rebelled? Not the one that say, you know what? Come over here to number 16 real quick. This one. That's right. See, this Korah, he, 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 was a, he, he was a hell of a name. That's all I can say. He, he, he's, he's a, he was a he was a heck of a dude. He played himself. No, he was not. No, no actually he was. That's right here. Mm -hmm. Number sixteen. Now Korah, the son of Ezar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi. And Nathan and Abraham, the sons of Elab, and On, the sons of Elab, the sons of Reuben, took men. Now, see, his name is spelled a little different. His is Korah. His name means bald. He's a bald man. Now, this is what he did. Is he led a rebellion. Right here in verse 3, they gathered themselves together against Moses and said, you take too much upon yourself, seeing we're holy, and you who is among us, why do you lift yourselves up above the congregation? But see, the names are spelled different. You got Korak and you have Korak. But when you look at it in English, you're going to think it's the same person. So these men in First Chronicles, they're not of the bloodline of Korak. Korak led a rebellion against Moses. And the earth swallowed them up. And he died, as he should have. No, he didn't go down into a pit. The earth swallowed him up. Yeah. He said, you know what? He said, if Yahuwah be with you, let the earth swallow you up. He said, if not, then we'll know. And the earth swallowed them niggas up. And everybody with them. Whole family. He had no, he had no lineage. Killed his sons, everybody with him. See, when Yahuwah want to get rid of you, he killed your whole bloodline. Sons of Korah no longer exist on the earth. Houses, Goods, sons, daughters, same thing happened to what's his name? You remember? A chan. Same thing happened to A chan. Wiped him out from under heaven. He wiped out all the Ahab sons as well. Say, I'm going to kill everybody that pissed against the wall. Anything they ever touched. And he did the same thing to A chan. In, in the book of Joshua. Killed everybody. Got him out of here. Come on back to First Chronicle chapter 9. But the reason I mention that because if you look in some of the songs, you'll see the son of the Korites. You'll see their names mentioned there. These are singers. Because we got to get to First Chronicles 15 before we get out of here. And I got time. I just have to give a bridge version of certain things. But notice that the sons of Korah were keepers of the entry of the gates of the tabernacle. You know, keepers is, is Shamar. Make sure there's nothing. Ah, entry. So you have Mavo, and this is the coming in. You got Meme, and you got Bot, and you got Ooh, and you got Olive. So they kept the entryway into the house or the crier. So if you see that Korah means crier, what's the first thing that should come to your mind according to the text? I can tell you what comes to my mind, but I'm asking what script will come to your mind. <laughs> Uh, if you think about Isaiah 58 and 1, cry loud, spare not. See, I think about the book of Proverbs when he say wisdom cry up in the street and say how long will you simple ones love simplicity and the only ones who will come to the cry is the ones who his words will be pleasant to and his words will be plain because they have understanding. So the person who guards the entry of the gate is the crier. Well, what are they crying? Yeah, Isaiah 58 and 1 is definitely acceptable to crying out of the word. Those who heard the call are the ones who are able to enter in. If you don't hear the call, you can't get in the house. Which takes us back to what I mentioned beforehand about uh, 
and he and Brandon here say he think about uh, Isaiah Forty with uh, John the Baptist, and I can I can dig it. I can dig it. I can dig it. Uh, I lost my train of thought. Y'all well, cut it out. 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 Fix your face. You were doing number ten at all. You must be asleep. <laughs> yeah, he just dropped that face in that car. That's sleep. But when you look at it, right? Oh, what I mentioned before. Shut that door and you come knocking on the door and he said, depart from me. I don't know you because you didn't hear the cry. Remember what he said? I called and they have not answered. And when I spake, they did not hear. So he said, I'll, I'll, I'll choose for them to lose. But let's continue. Now I want to grab this word for service and make sure it's not what we've been looking at already. And it's Abador. So this is what the Korites were over. They were over the work of the service and they were keepers of the gates of the tabernacle. They kept the gates of the house itself. Let's continue. And Phineas, the son of Eleazar, was the ruler over them in time past, and Yahuwah was with them. And Zechariah, the son of Meshemiah, was the porter of the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. All these were chosen to be porters in the gates for 212. And they were reckoned by the genealogy in their villages, whom David and Samuel the seer did ordain in their set office. So it was Samuel and David that set these men up. Because before Samuel and David, there was not a specific order that the priests operated in. We kind of looked at that last night, right? So they kind of did whatever it was that they were doing. Samuel and David came in and set it in and said, y'all going to do this? Y'all going to do that? Y'all going to do this? Y'all going to do that? Y'all going to do this? Y'all going to do that? And remember from what we looked at last night, that ties into what the Ruach say, right? Some will have the, the apostles. Some will be prophets. Some will be teachers. Some will heal. Some will have tongues because everybody set in their course according to the, to the word. What is that? That's what you call structure. Or, you know what I'm saying? Everybody has a set job to do. You don't have 15 people trying to do the same thing. This person doing this, that's more effective. Most people who have never structured an organization of any type have no understanding of why it is important for everybody to have a set task to do. You know what I'm saying? I don't need five people trying to do what an apostle do. I need them three to do that, and I need you to teach. I need you to prophesy. I need you to heal. The reason why a lot of people don't like to do that, it's no different when you look at a sports team. Everybody has a role to play if you want to win a championship. Most people don't win because most people don't want to play their position and play their role because they want to be the star of the team. You want to be seen. You want the accolades. That means nine times out of ten, you're a loser. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't have the ability to come together with a group of people and work together in unison for the purpose of victory. When you're worrying about shine. This is why he told them, don't worry about who's the greatest among you. He that is greatest among you, let him be a servant. See, you worrying about the wrong thing. See, I'm going to honor all y'all regardless. Is you trying to win or is you trying to get some shine? That's why he told them that, because were they not arguing about who was the greatest? And what he came through and told them. Basically, I worry about the wrong thing. You trying to win. Ain't no trying. We going to win. And if you don't want to play on the team, then I'll just get you out of here. And I'll bring somebody who will play that role. Because everybody can't be the superstar on the team. You got to have role players in order to win. You got to play your role. You got to play your position. And you got to play it well. You got to be the best at it. And if you master your position. So you know a lot of people, like you said, people be covered in other people's gifts. You don't need to be covered in other people's gifts. If that's what Yahuwah who gave him, that's what Yahuwah who gave him. If Yahuwah who told you to sit on your black behind and say that like you told John, he told him, uh, telling Peter, what if I told him to sit here till I come? What would that do to you? Go do what I told you to do. So you ready to go do what he's doing. That ain't got nothing to do with you. How about you just sit right here? But what do I get to do? Sit right here. But what does that do? That's what I want you to do. You have no idea why he would tell you to sit right there. You have no idea what he would use you for for that, but you know why? People can't see that. Vain glory and pride. Because you want somebody to know your name. Man, who cares if a nigga know your name? Does you who know your name? So what if a million niggas know your name and you who don't know your name? What good is it if a million niggas know your name? Let's 
Let's continue. First Chronicles chapter 9. Look at what he said in verse 23. So their children had their oversight of the gates of the house of Yahuwah, namely the house of the tabernacle by wards. And again, wards is guards, your charge, your function, your obligation, your service. And the four quarters were the quarters. Towards the east, west, north, and south, the brethren were in the villages will come after seven days from time to time with them. For these Levites, the four chief porters, were set in their office and were over the chambers and the treasuries of the house of Elohim. They lodged round about the house of Elohim because their charge was upon them, and the opening thereof every morning pertained to them. So what does that tell you if they lodged? They dwelt there. They passed the night there. The word is loom. Lamai, who and noon. It's to lodge, to stop over, to pass the night, to abide, or to remain, or to rest, or to lodge. So they live close to the temple. Certain of them had charge of the ministering vessels that they should bring them in and out by tail. Tail is misfar, and that's number, or recounting, or relation. Verse 29, some of them were appointed to oversee the vessels and all the instruments of the sanctuary, the fine flour, the wine, the oil, the frankincense, the spices. Some of the priests made the ointment of the spices. Madaniah, one of the Levites, who was the firstborn of Shalom, the Korahite, has set office, set the office over the things that were made in the pans. The other brethren of the sons of the Korahites were over the shoe bread to prepare it every Shabbat. These are the singers, the chief of the fathers of the Levites who remaining in the chambers were free for they were employed in that work day and night. Now we're dealing with what we want to talk about this afternoon and that's the singers. It says that they were employed in that work. Now when we look at free, the word is pater. They were unoccupied and free to work. Now this one we will look at. You got pay, you got tech, you got yard, and you got rocks. Now go ahead. They free to work. That's what that means. That means that they didn't have any other duty other than the same day and night. <clears throat> you know what comes to my mind that it's in the, like in the book of Acts? Y'all remember when they came to Peter them talking about the widows that wasn't getting fed? What Peter told them people? Man over, yeah, he said, set some men over that work. He said, we'll maintain the prayer and, and, and the preaching of this word. You know why he told them that? Because we need to be free to work. I ain't got no time to be dealing with it. I got work to do. If I'm over here ministering food, then I'm not free to work. You notice that these singers, they didn't have to do nothing that had to be done in that tabernacle. They were free to work. They were unoccupied. The whole particular job was to sing. Now, remember that word is sure for singing. and that's being paired to the worship of the highest. Now, what y'all got for that pay, that chat, that yard, and that rosh? I would tell you off the top that if you're going to come with that yard, you're going to have to go ahead and grab worship again. You're going to have to grab worship again. Because when you're dealing with this here, the reason I, like, I want to go through this is one is part of the priest. And y'all know a lot of brews get offended that brews who want to do praise and worship. I don't understand it. I was just thinking about something that, that Big Boom had posted the other day. Talking about somebody said they too churchy. You know what I'm saying? And I don't understand what that meant. I understood what it meant, but it don't make sense to me. How could somebody, why would you be looking down on somebody because they choose to want to sing to you who or for however long they choose to do that for? You know what I'm saying? That's their business. I don't get it twisted. You probably get it. You know what I'm saying? We're going to put this dope on the street. That ain't no, you know what I'm saying? We're going to do that. But if them people want to sing, I don't see why people, I've never understood why people are offended at that. I know some of y'all don't seen rules get offended at that. I know why they get offended because they have flashbacks in church. That's what they equate that to. Well, uh, they were saying that uh, it's a special word. And, uh, saying what the oh, uh, uh, that's uh, incorrect. That's an idiot. That's Ezekiel chapter 28. That was referring to Yahusha. That's some people say that Ezekiel 28 is referring to say anybody that think that Yahuwah would tell them tell anyone don't sing to me is a dupe. You know what I'm saying? There is not an English word that could quantify the level of stupidity that an individual would have to possess to say Yahuwah would not want you to sing. And I'm just being serious. I'm not being funny. I'm being dead serious. You know what I'm saying? That makes no sense. Now the key 
here what we don't do is, remember we talked about this here, and one of them songs, he said, sing to you who or with what? But understand it. Why would this man not want you to sing to him when the book say in Jeremiah 33 that you will be singing to him? When the book of Revelation say they'll sing a new song and the song of Moses. You just read in Revelation 5 where they sung a new song. Yeah, you got pay, you got chat, you got yard, you got Ross. Oh, yeah, that's all. No, it's two different words. See, they got to spell two different ways. So you got one where the yard is absent, and you got one that where it's present. No, no, so you weren't in no, no. Yeah. Right. no, I'm just because let's see what you're talking about. See, it's got two different ones. So you probably seen that first one. No doubt. And because they mean the same thing. And there it is. Yahoo Shah contains the highest praise. Because remember, what did we talk about the other night? When he sat down and he drank that wine and he ate that bread, what did they go do? They went and sung a hymn. Well, who the only people charged to sing him? Levites, priests. So they're priests under a different priesthood. So that's why they went and did that. Because that's what they were charged to do. You know what I'm saying? So when you sit back and you look at it, absolutely. He mentioned in Second Chronicles chapter 20 when his son out sings. Come on over there since Brother Saran mentioned that, that man. Come over there to Second Chronicles chapter 20. Okay. There it is. Pick this up at about uh verse 17. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17. Ain't nothing wrong with it. You know what I'm saying? You know, a lot of instances y'all know that we be pressed for time. You know what I'm saying? So if you're in a spot and you press for time, you can't spend 30 or 40 minutes on that. And y'all don't be on time. So if y'all was on time, then that could be done. You know what I'm saying? Who? Well, look here. 20 and 17. 17. Y'all know y'all don't be on time. I mean, I don't that. That don't ain't stopping nobody. I don't know no songs the same to you, but if you that you ain't said up there to say, let me get my wind pipes in order and somebody me, me, me. You ain't do it. No, remember that. Remember that. No, remember that. I had remember that nigga before say he wanted to write one nigga. Say, well, when you gonna write one nigga? Ain't never write it. Got a song. Yeah, big, 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 <laughs> Let me go get up and be mad with me. He disturbed me out of my rest. Second Chronicles 20 and 17. I think that's it. Man. Let's do this nigga, man. Hey, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves and stand you still and see the salvation of Yahuwah with you, O Yahuwah in Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed, for tomorrow go out against them, for Yahuwah will be with you. Let's sit there, Paul. Well, guess what? When Yahoo Shot come back, you need to fight, or will you just have to stand still. That's all you got to do. Praise the Lord. Let's look at it. He's saying, Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Yehuda and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before Yahuwah, worshiping Yahuwah. And the Levites, the sons of the Korahites, and of the sons of the Korites, stood up to praise Yahuwah, Elohim of Yasharal, with a loud voice. And they ran and rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa, and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Yehuda, you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in your Elohim, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, and you so shall you prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto Yahuwah, that they should praise Yahuwah, praise the beauty of Kadash, as they went out before the army, and to say, Hallelujah, for his mercy endure forever. So these niggas just be talking. You understand what I'm telling you? These niggas just be talking. 
Because he was getting ready to go to war. And he told him, go out there and sing. All right. So, you know what I'm saying? It's nothing to be offended at. It's nothing to be offended at at all. It's in the text. He sent men over that specific, specific call. So, guess what? That's their job. I mean, that's their particular. At the end of the day, he said to sing songs of praise. There's no such thing as gospel music. All because because that's not good news music, if you will. Just like there's no such thing as truth music, as Hebrews like to make it. There's nothing but songs of praise or songs of worship. That's all that they are. Oh, you want me to get 22 for you, man? Come over to 2 Chronicles 22. You want verse 22. And when they began to sing and to praise Yahuwah, Yahuwah said an ambushments against the sons of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which will come against Yehuda, and they were smitten. So as they began to sing, Yahuwah killed all the people. But yeah, man, what I'm saying, but like, yeah, bro, there's no such thing as truth music. There's no, those are men's manly labels. It's just a song of praise, according to the text. That's all it is. I don't care if you're rapping it. I don't care if you're singing it. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if you call it a song, a spiritual song. At the end of the day, it's a song of praise. That's all that it is. Yeah. Those are just labels that niggas could take to do something so they can monetize it. And that's their business if they want to monetize it. I'm knocking not I'm not knocking anybody who seeks to monetize what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? Because you had to put time, effort, and possibly money into that. So if you decide that you want to monetize it, that's your business. Because ain't nowhere you will say you can't monetize no song. He never told you that. But he appointed certain men in regards to the service to him that this is what they are to do. What you do outside of the of the tabernacle, that's your business. You know what I'm saying? You can't monetize it while you're in the tabernacle. Oh, like y'all need to pay me $20 to sing this song. I say, no, nah, nigga, you wrong. You know what I'm saying? But if you outside that door, and you say, I'm making this music, and I want to sell it, that's your business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got to look at everything. Everything relates to what you do when you inside his house. And then how you conduct yourself outside the house. If you choose not to sell it, that's your business. Just like Saran said, the workman is worthy of his hire. That's your business. You know what I'm saying? See, we be wilding out and be trying to do this that damn third. Because I'm gonna be honest with you, a lot of brews want to see you broken struggling because they broke struggling. The misery love, huh? You know what I'm saying? They struggling, they say they sorry, they lazy. So they want you to stay that way. Mm -hmm. But what did Paul tell you? He said, let every man work with his own hands. He may be able to give to a person who needs it. If everybody broke, how somebody gonna help somebody? If you need something to eat and I ain't got no money. I can't eat. You can't eat. Everybody home. That makes no sense. You know what I'm saying? Dude, just, I'm just telling you, man. Dude, I don't mean you around here like, oh, I got to be rich. But good Lord, son, if, you're, if this man needed a sandwich, you'll leave me able to know what you want. Go get your son to eat. Nigga, I got it. You know what I'm saying? You need your son to drink. Boy, I got it. And the difference is, like the table before, you ain't supposed to be pressed. Not to tell you the book tell you to give and seek nothing in return. If the person pay you back, they pay you back. You know what I'm talking about? But you ain't supposed to be pressed with it. And you're supposed to have enough common sense to know. Don't give what you don't got. And don't loan nobody. Give to them. Period. And the boy tell you that. Don't be like, bro, let me borrow $20. Here's $20. You won't owe me nothing. If you pay me back, fine. If you don't, who cares? See, that saves you a lot of trouble. See, I learned that before the word. Don't lend nobody nothing. Because if you lend it, that means you ain't got it to give. Give it to them. If they ask you for 500 but you only can spare 100 hey, here's 100 well, what about when you say you look at What I mean, again, that goes on back to the character of the person. Whether they pay it back or not ain't got nothing to do with me. If they pay it back, that's a sign of their character. That speaks to them. But you ain't got to give me nothing back because I'm not loaning you anything. I'm giving it to you. If you pay it back, Again, that's a reflection of your... The difference is I'm not telling you I'm giving it to you. You know what I'm saying? You're like, bro, let me loan. Bro, let me borrow 50 bucks. I gave you 50 bucks. I ain't going to tell you it's a loan because I'm not worried about if you pay it back to me. Because if I don't have it, I'm not going to give it to you. Because I don't have it. You don't give people what you can't stand to lose. If you know you don't have it, because guess what? I told you this before. 
and we was raised this way. And Trick Daddy put it like this here. And they say, if I ain't got it, what, I ain't your dog no more? Well, if that's the case, nigga, I ain't got it then. Because if you get offended because you ask me for something and I say I ain't got it, you ain't my friend no way. Nigga, you don't owe me no explanation on why you ain't got it. You know why? Because I'm a man. You got bills. You didn't give it to me. That means you ain't got it. And you still my nigga, whether you give it to me or not. See, that's whole stuff. You feel entitled. You my nigga, you supposed to give me that. That's nigga pocket watch. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Two things a man ain't supposed to be doing. Swipe watching and pocket watching. Nigga, both of that junk. Man. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Watch another nigga pocket. Hey, nigga, I used to be, we used to be selling people. When we used to be, when we used to, when we used to, bro, when we used to be hustling, bro, dudes would see you catching serves and do be like, hey, bro, let me get a hundred bucks. And be like, bro, I ain't got it. I just see you get 15 serves. You's a whole nigga. You don't know what that man got to do with that money. You know what I'm saying? You over here counting his pockets. So you ask him for something. Count this man. See, that's why you ain't got no money. You count another man pocket. Or my own pipes. Well, I don't care nothing about that because that ain't got nothing to do with me. Back to First Chronicle chapter nine. I'm gonna watch my pipes. Right <laughs> I want to get in the bed. Don't lay on your belly. I bet it back was hurt. That nigga was in the band looking like a beast whale. <laughs> First Chronicles chapter 9. Verse 33. So it says, these are the singers, the chief of the fathers of the Levites who remaining in the chambers were free. So they were employed in that work day and night. So these men were employed in the purpose of singing praise. That was their job. These are the chief fathers of the Levites, were chief throughout the generations. These dwelt at Jerusalem. And in Gibeon dwelt the father of Gibeon, Yehel, whose wife's name was Micah, and the firstborn son Abaddon, and Zer, and Kish, and Paul, and Ner, and Nadab, and Gedor, and Ahel, and Zechariah, and Michalos. See, we're not going to finish all these men's names. Come over here to chapter 15. What is it, 16 of them? Yeah, because we got to go through chapters 15 and 16. So we'll probably get some of 16. Y'all will on tomorrow. Ken and I quickly, we can run through chapter 15. First Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 1. David made him houses in the city of David and are prepared a place for the Ark of Elohim. Why do you keep showing your draw? You know you're wrong. You're trying to be cute. You're trying to put on a cute face. You're out here showing your diaper. Nobody wants to see no diaper. There's probably doo doo in there. <laughs> and saying, David made him a house in the city of David and prepared a place for the ark of Elohim and pitched it, pitched for a tent. Then David said, None ought to carry the ark of Elohim but the Levites. For him have you who are chosen to carry the ark of Elohim and to minister unto him forever. So now let's pause. And let's look at, look, look forward. Number one, who the only people supposed to carry the ark? And what's inside the ark? The covenant. So the Levites, the only one supposed to be carrying that covenant and serving you. But now let's look at the new covenant. So now it's whoever he chooses to be an apostle, a prophet, pastor, an evangelist, a teacher. They carry that off. And they serve him forever. But now let's take it even a step further. What did we read in Revelation 7 and 9? He said that we just read in Revelation 5, right? That you would become priests under him, correct? Now in Revelation 7, they said everybody they seen with white robes will be doing what? Serving at the altar or in the temple of Elohim. Is that what it says? Did we not read in Revelation 20? If you're part of the first resurrection, what will you be? I did, well, that too. Let's look at it. Revelation 20 and verse. That too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I need 20 and, and, and four. Let's do 20 and four. 
Revelation 20 and 4. And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahusha and for the word of Elohim. There you go. Saran hit them here. Uh, and, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with the Shiach a thousand years. For the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Baruch and Kadash is he that have part in the first resurrection. On such the second death have no power, for they shall be the pre priests of Elohim and of Mashiach and shall reign with him a thousand years. Mm. See, that takes us back to what we keep seeing in Ezekiel about priests. How would you know if you were called to be in one of those positions? Well, let's look at this here. If you if you would know you were called to be an apostle if you received the doctrine throughout the totality of, of the Old Testament and you could manifest your own child. You would know if you was a pastor because someone would teach you the word and you would fit the qualifications that are in there. Same for a teacher, same for an evangelist. And if you were going to know if you were a prophet, to who would manifest himself to you in a vision or a dream? According to Numbers chapter 12. You having a hard day, you think? I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> hard day? Hard day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whatever get him to stop crying. Stop man. <laughs> he thought he didn't see. <laughs> Come on back over here. So you see how that makes sense? So when he say Yahuwah have chosen, and he said there are many a call, but what? Few are chosen. The only people coming into the city, hold on. What he told you in Revelation 17, everybody that with him is called, called, faithful, and chosen. That's what he said, right? So when you turn around and you look at that, the people who going to carry that covenant are the people who Yahuwah has chosen. I should say who Yahusha has chosen. Because he said, whomsoever I send, see who sent me. Stank, huh? I think someone's in there. Someone's in there. Man, sit down. Sit. That's right. Oh, Eugene's before you. You have to stand behind your feet. Verse 3 of 1 Chronicles 15. And David gathered all Yasharal together. Huh? Oh, no, I thought you were saying. To bring up the ark of Yahuwah unto his place, which he had prepared for it. And David assembled the sons of Aaron, the Levites, of the sons of Koath, Uriah the chief, and of his brethren, 120. Of the sons of Mariah, Asiah the chief, and his brethren, 120. Of the sons of Gershom, Joel the chief, and his brethren, 130. Of the sons of uh, Elalisban, Shemaiah the chief, and his brethren, 200. Of the sons of Hebron, Elah the chief, and his brethren, fourscore. And of the sons of Uzziah and Aminadab the chief, and his brethren, 112. David called for Zadok and Abakal the priest, and for the Levites, for Uriah, Asiah, Joel, Shemaiah, Eliel and Ammonitadad. And he said unto them, You are the chief of your fathers, the Levites. Sanctify yourselves, both you and your brethren, that you may bring up the ark of Yahuwah, Elohim, and Gasherah, unto the place that I prepared for. See, a lot of times, you know, a lot of people get messed up. See, you're trying to handle that covenant, and you ain't sanctified yourself to bring that up. What did he tell you in John 17 and 17, right? Sanctify them with your truth. The word is truth. I sanctify myself by the truth. But they might sanctify themselves by the truth. So you can't pick up the faith. Remember what I told you in Psalms 50? Who are you to take my covenant in your mouth, seeing that you cast my words behind your back? Ain't that what he said in Psalms 50? I'm not going to get it. You read that in your own mouth. You know what I'm talking about? So when you turn around and you look at this here, because look at the next verse that we're about to read in verse 13. He said, because you did it not at the first, you who are Elohim made a breach upon us, for we saw them not after the due order. You remember that? That's in the book of Samuel, right? When the dude died, when he touched it, because they did it how they wanted to do it. They didn't do it how he said to do it. You got to do it how he said to do it. So how do we look at that in a due order? It's mishpah or according to the due judgment. Because Yahuwah didn't already set the judgment. So you can't serve Yahuwah how you want to. See, that's why we get the word bad now, because people are not administering the Ark of the Covenant according to the due order. See, you're not an apostle, you're not a prophet, you're not a pastor, you're not an evangelist, you're not a teacher. You sat at the house, you felt you knew something, you want to pick up the covenant, not after the due judgment, and now people are dying because of it. 
Don't you know I told you that last night. I've been telling you that for years, and that's just my. I don't even expect. Like dudes really don't know what they be talking about, and see, dudes really look at it like people want people to come see them. It's not about people coming to see you. It's about these dudes don't know what they're talking about. Do you know how detrimental that is to hear the word of salvation from somebody they don't know what they're talking about? You know what I'm saying? That's detrimental. Y'all know people who you know that talk the word and you know that nigga ain't know what he was talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like straight up and down. I done had men come tell me, boy, I want to teach, boy, but I don't know what I'm talking about. So why would I let you do that? Why would I let you do that? Then I just tell you about something like that said that you said. Then I just tell you about something like that the other day, last week. Like I can't in good conscience sit you right here and you don't know what you're talking about. And you telling me you don't know what you're talking about. Or the fact that I didn't even see if you knew what you were talking about. Because that's a process. As of course, as we read it last night, what about them bishops? What did it say? As they were what? As they were taught. That's why he said you can't even be a pastor if you're new to the work. Somebody you have to be taught. Because if you don't know what you're talking about, you're going to get lifted up in pride and you're going to come in condemnation of the devil. And now you're going to be condemned. Should have sat you behind down somewhere. You know what I'm saying? But guess what, though? This generation now, as I done told you before, Holy Spirit, my teacher, I don't need nobody to teach me this, that, there, and the third. And teacher, how are we going to stop these bad doctrines? I ain't going to stop. It. Ain't nobody God to stop. It. When you ever seen you who will say, let me stop bad doctrine? He said, let them go. He said, I, he said they ran. I ain't sent them. They, they say they done spoke. I ain't told them nothing. He didn't say, go out there and stop the doctrines. He said, go out there and preach my word. They'll get exposed. See, that, that's, that's a feminine mindset that you feel like you got to stop everything. A man already know if you're a man, you're going to shine as a man irregardless. I don't care what they're over there doing. You know what I'm saying? If they over there doing this and doing that and doing this, it don't make no difference. Yahushua told you, he said, if you don't believe me for my words, believe me for my words. You're going to know I'm going to follow him as soon as I step on the scene. Ain't that what he told you in 1 Corinthians? That a man fall down and say as the truth, Allah is in you? But what most brews say, we got to destroy these doctrines. That's feminine stuff. You want to argue and go back and forth. That don't lead to God and the edifying. I ain't got no time to argue with no man. Argue with somebody in the man. What am I going to argue with you for? She finna come out of there. What am I argue with you for? When did you see Yahusha walk around saying, let me destroy the doctrines of the scribes? When they came up on him inside them, he went ahead and punched. He was so focused on the people who needed salvation, he wasn't concerned with somebody who didn't know what he was talking about. You know what I'm saying? That's what we get messed up at. Do you really care about people being saved or is you worried about what somebody's talking about? So what if a nigga believe he, got, he, he could have seven wives? Why do you care? Go teach what the man gave you to teach unless he didn't give you nothing. That's why I be telling you. How in 2020 and dudes still talking about the same thing they were talking about in 2015? You was not with you. Ain't no way in the world. It's 2020 and you still talking about how many wives you can get. You still talking about when does the day start? What day the Sabbath on? You need to tell me that of all the wisdom and understanding that you forgot to give, that's all they gave you, my nigga? All right, I'm good. I don't want to hear nothing you talking about. Not, not, nan, nary word. You know what I'm saying? Not, nan, nary word. I can't think of, niggas, well, niggas don't talk about that talk. I thank the Lord for that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I thank the Lord for that. What? Every day. They don't argue about Esau no more. I say thank the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Thank the Lord. This is the stuff that dudes argue about. But you have to look at it, right? Is, is that if you are if you who is with you and he sent you, he's gonna give you something that leads to the ministering and edifying of his people. That's not for the people, that's for you. That's what he should tell you about that flat earth. That's not for the people, that's for you. Because somebody who laid in iniquity, who faith is low, you talking to him about if the earth is round or flat, what did that do for him when he walked away from you? That didn't do nothing for him. You know what that's going to make him do? You know what? I don't think I want to serve this God no more. And they're going to blame you for, for what you told me. Because I needed to be strengthened so I could be converted. And you told me, see, they that's a lie to your brother. See, ain't no such thing as gravity. See, a nigga with some sense going to be like, you know what? I'm going to holler at you, baby. Then y'all, and you know what y'all response be? See, they don't want to hear the truth. You know what I'm saying? 
That's what dudes do. I'm not saying you specifically, but that's what dudes do. That's feminine. That's a form of manipulation to get an individual to participate in a conversation of no quality and no work. Come on back over here to First Chronicles 15, man. Verse 14. Oh, and it says, so the priests and the Levites sanctified themselves to bring up the ark of Yahuwah, Elohim, and Yasharal. And the sons of the Levites, I missed my verse. Hold on. And the sons of the Levites bear the ark of Elohim upon their shoulders with the staves thereon, as Moses commanded according to the word of Yahuwah. And David spake to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be singers with instruments of music, psalteries, harps, cymbals, sounding by lifting up the voice with joy. Now let's look at that again, right? It said David appointed these men to do this. This is what he appointed these men to do. Now again, I'm mentioning this because what do we see in Revelation 18, or excuse me, Revelation 19, after Babylon got destroyed? The people lifted up their voice with joy and sang to Yahuwah. Now remember, you're under the priesthood of the Melchizedek, you would be considered a priest, so therefore you could do this. You understand? So when you look at this here, same way that we read that Second Chronicles uh, chapter 20, you see the same regard of them singing praises to you. I'm going to read that verse to you again, but I need to get the word out of here real quick. Now, sure is the same word for singers and music in this particular verse. You see, I wanted to get that. That's not what I was talking about. My bad. That was a noise. Oh, I wasn't. I just overlooked it. Now, when we look at psalteries, right? It's Navel. And it's the same word that was used for skin bag or pitcher or earthen vessel. But of course, we're not using that there. But you know, it's a heart. It's a flute. It's a good It's a musical instrument. You got Noon Bot and Lamar. You can go ahead. Noon Bot and Lamar. That's what you got. For psalteries. But it means instrument. Yeah, it means musical instrument. But it also, depending on, you can see it in another verse, it means uh, a skin a skin bag or uh, earthen vessel. Because I think we've used it before in regards to an earthen vessel. Noon by Lamar. Yes. Oh, you didn't say that? Okay. Oh, you say it's still death to so this still death to the nation. It's the same thing that people out here teaching now. You need to get you some land and you need to do this and you need to do that. And that man ain't tell you to teach that. Put it in trash. I said the son of teach your life. The son of teach your life? Well, that's what he said in them songs would do, wouldn't it? Notice that he said to lift up your voice with joy. Let's look at verse 17. Our first Chronicles 15. So the Levites appointed Heman, the son of Joel, and of his brethren, Asaph, the son of Barakah, the sons of Merari, their brethren, mm -hmm. Ethan, the son of Cushah, and of their brethren of the second degree. Now, of course, second degree is not in there. It's double or repetition or second quarter or district or second in order. That takes us back to the courses. of. The, do y'all remember how many courses of order there was in Chronicles? It was 24. You had 24 different orders, if my memory served me correctly. Let me verify that for you. If my memory served me correctly, it was 24. That is correct. It was 24. 24 courses of the Levites. So this particular man is of the second order, not second degree. And they try to tell you that's masonry when you deal with old smarty art, nigga. That's what they're gonna try to tell you. Mm -hmm. But that's not what it says because degree is not there, it just means second order. And with them, their brethren of the second degree, Zechariah, Ben, Yazeel, Sheremoth, Yehiel, Uni, Elab, Benaiah, Messiah, Matthiah, Eliphel, Mekaniah, Over Edom, Jael, the porters. So the singers were Heman, Asaph, and Ethan. And were appointed to sound with the symbols of brass. Now I was locked up in prison with a dude named. He I first seen his name on his name tag. I thought his name was He Man. 
You know what I'm saying? And he was like, no, nah, it's Heman. Come from the box. I'm like, okay, did not know that. You know what I'm saying? But it means faith. You should throw that because the Aman is in there. It means faith. So you look at one of the first people who sing praise is somebody who's faithful. You got Asa, who again is the gatherer, and then you got Athan, which is enduring. So what do you have? You have a faithful or an enduring faithful gatherer. Look at the sit, sit back and just take that in for a moment and think about that. You know, Yahoo Shock said he's a faithful witness. You understand? And you know that he gonna gather. We talked about that last week. We do the uh. Man, Proverbs like you said, you gotta gather in my hand. Gather's what it was. Why I try to praise the lamb? I appreciate you on that. When he's talking about gathering the wind in his fist, these are the singers now. Now let's look at Zechariah and the rest of these men who were singing with. Well, thank you for sharing, sir. Okay. Oh, you excited? Okay. Now, of course, Zechariah is Yahuwah remembers. Isaiah is whom Elohim comforts. <coughs> Shemaroth is the name of heights. Or the name on high, if you would. Or the name of the highest. Uni is uh, afflicted. Elab is Elohim is my father. Messiah is the work of Yahuwah. Now we could go through all of these here, but probably not today. We probably have to double back. Benaiah is Yahuwah has built or Yahuwah has built up. And these are the ones who played on the Psalteries on the Alamoth. And of course, Alamoth is a psalm reading and also means a young woman. But nevertheless, we can't get through all these names today. And then you got Mattiah and, Elip and, and Elipel and Mekaniah over Edom and Jael and Isaiah with the heart on the Sheminef to excel. And Kaniah, the chief of the Levites, was the psalm. He instructed about the song because he was still. Now we got one specific man who was the chief of all the Levites, Kaniah, who Yahuwah has established. He was for the song. The word for song here is Masah, which is a, a low bearing tribute or a burden. So who Yahuwah has established is for a burden. Now, what does that tell you? He was instructed about the song, which is Yassar, and Messiah is the song again, and skillful is, is the word for understanding. So now you can sit back and you look at Kaniah, and we can begin to understand that he's probably not telling you about singing no song. Because he didn't use the word for song here. He used the word for load or burden. The one who you who has established is the chief of the Levites, was for the song, and he was instructed about the song, and he was skillful. Now, of course, instruct, instruct about the song here is Yassar, and that is to admonish or to discipline or correct or to chasten. Well, let's take a look at it. We'll grab a couple places. Absolutely. All about Yahoo Shah and name. We just don't have enough time this afternoon to do them, but you who are willing, I'll slide them in there on tomorrow, and if not, later on in the week. Muffin Man, Matthew 26 or 27. Muffin Man, bugging out. <laughs> Muffin Man be getting bad attitude. I'm talking about Matthew 27 to 27. That boy's upset. Now, why are you sitting there stretching your stretching that out like that? Did your mother buy that for you to stress it out like that? Oh, she did. So if I ask her that and she says no, should you not be required to receive an elbow on the top of your forehead? Then don't tell lies. Just say no, she didn't. And I'm not going to stretch out my my uh my head cover. Because then it's going to be all ratted and padded. And then you're going to be walking around here looking like nobody loves you. And ain't nobody got time for that. Matthew 27, 27. What'd you say? 
No, I'm not a girl. I'm a man. <laughs> you a boy. He is. He's a young man. You are a young man. Your name what? Yes, we know. We've been calling you that for many a season. Yes, I am aware. Well, what's your name is, Batman? man? But you, he, you're not fat, man. He's fat. I don't think he cares. He says he's a hero because he likes Paw Patrol. I don't like Paw Patrol. Matthew 20, 20, 27, 27. Then the soldiers of the governor took Yahusha into common hall and gathered under him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had planted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, the Malik of the Yahudim. And then they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him, put on his own raiment, led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found the man Simon, Cyrene, Simon by name, and they compelled, and him they compelled to bear his cross or to bear his stake. Now, you know, right, you know, talk about this here, right? There's three places that we look at when we look at Yahweh Shah carrying that stake. Who can recall one of the three? In the script, there are three places off the top. Ezekiel chapter 12 is one. You read Ezekiel chapter 12 if you don't know, and you will see Ezekiel being told to carry. Actually, it's four places, excuse me. And you can see him telling, being told to carry something on his shoulder. Actually, I can say five. Now you got Genesis chapter 49 with Issachar. So that's number two. It's three more. You see the government should be on the show. That's, that's, that's the one in Isaiah. That's that's the that's the third. That's Isaiah chapter nine, verse six. Under you, a son is born, and he carried the government on the show. You got two more. You got Samuel, and that's the other one. I think y'all mentioned all five. Because you got Genesis forty nine. You got Judges. I think that's what by chapter sixteen. You know what I'm talking about? Where well, Samson carried both burdens on his shoulder. You got Ezekiel chapter 12 when Ezekiel was instructed to carry that burden on his shoulder. You got Isaiah chapter 9. And what was the other? With the water. Hey, I don't think that's one of I think one of y'all mentioned sign of the call. I don't forget. So it, it doesn't matter. But y'all got four. I don't forget. I'm not gonna lie to you. I just know it's Genesis 49, Isaiah 9, uh Judges 16. Ezekiel 12, it was something else that came to my mind. I might have said five too quick. I might have said five too quick. But nevertheless, well, even, well, I can say five and one that we looked at because of the Levites bearing the covenant and the staves on their shoulder. You know what I'm saying? But that wasn't what I was thinking. My son didn't want went away. But when you look at that, that's what that name means. We know that he was admonished or instructed because we know that he was disciplined or chastened for our regard. And that's how you sing a new song. Because you got songs that are going to be sung in Revelation 14, about 144,000. You got a new song of Moses that Revelation 15 tell you you're going to sing. Because the first song of Moses is a song about redemption. So that's why you're going to sing another song of Moses that's going to be about redemption. Let's continue the first part of the 15. We ain't going to get the first part of the 16 today. I can tell you that right now. But notice that when he said he was skillful, right again, that's the word I meant. I missed that he had understanding and discernment. That's what remember it says. Kanai, the chief of the Levites, was for burdens. He was disciplined about the burden because he understood. That's what it says. I'm going to say that to you again. This First Chronicles chapter 20, 15, verse 22. Aniah, or Yahuwah, has established, and you know Yahushua was established from what? The foundation of the world that he would be slain. He was the chief of the Levites. He was for a burden. He was disciplined about the burden because he understood. 
So how many times did Yahusha tell these people that he had to be sacrificed? Now, remember when we talked a while back what Psalms 40 say? To sing a new song, and that new song was talking about his death and resurrection. That's the song you're supposed to be out here singing. That's the song you're supposed to be out here singing. Then we just read earlier, they say, let his name be proclaimed among the heathens, that you who are reign. How do you let the world know your Elohim reign? By the preaching of the gospel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's continue in verse 23. Bechariah and Alkanah were doorkeepers for the ark. Shebaniah and Jehoshaphat and, and, and Nathaniel and, and Masai and Zechariah and Benaiah and Eliezer, the priests, did blow with the trumpets before the ark of Elohim. And over Edom and Yahiah were doorkeepers for the ark. So David and the elders of Yasharal and the captains over thousands went up to bring the ark of the covenant of Yahuwah out of the house of over Edom with joy. It came to pass when Elohim helped the Levites that bear the ark of the covenant of Yahuwah, they offered seven bullocks and seven rams. David was clothed with a robe of fine linen, and the Levites that bear the ark and the singers, and Kaniah, the master of the song with the singers, and David also had upon him an ephod of linen. Why is it important that David had on an ephod of linen? Who knows what that is? Now, again, when they say the masters of the song, it's telling you that Kaniah is the chief of the load or the burden. With those who are paired to the praise or the worship of the highest, and David was clothed in a in a linen ephod. Who knows the importance of this linen ephod? No, 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 no. I'm talking about according to the text. That's a priest garment. Yeah, high priest garment to be specific. You know what I'm saying? That's not a garment that anybody can go put on. That's a high priest garment. You know what I'm talking about? Come to Exodus chapter 28 if I'm not mistaken. So the reason why I mention that, because if David has on the garment of a high priest, then there is an underlying message that is being expounded of the priesthood of Melchizedek and the one who is leading the bringing up of the covenant and leading the praise is a king and a priest at the same time. Yeah, he left a linen. Now, when we look at that with him putting on that linen garment, because we didn't deal with that, it's been a long time. That was showing that he was a high priest and what he was putting on the ruach and putting on the order of Melchizedek and going to perform the office of that priesthood only because he was sacrificed according to the workers. Of, guess what? Who asked, who asked for him to be killed? The priests and the scribes. And who the only ones who can do the sacrifice? And that's why they're the ones who ask for him to be killed, because he's going to be killed according to this law. You know what I'm talking about? He's going to do it the exact same way. It's going to be done according to the order of Aaron, so that we can discard the order of Aaron and turn around and, and deal with this order of Melchizedek, which is a, a commandment of endless life. And that go back to what she mentioned last night. We learned about a, a bloodline that's polluted. This flesh, because it turns back to dust. You will see corruption. We're not focused on becoming a part of the of the spirit line, if you would, of the Elohim head, which is incorruptible. Like I seen a brood the other day talking about this ain't Christianity with a pie in the sky. See, a lot of people, the book itself tells you that you have an inheritance in heaven, which is incorruptible and undefiled. People take that as being as that that's a pie in the sky because they want what they want right now. Because they don't really believe that there's something coming after. See, we don't believe that we're going to die and go to heaven and float and I'm going to get this and I'm going to get that. But this man told us that he would put his tabernacle on earth and he would dwell with us and he would be our Elohim and we would be his people. He said that he would build a city and that city would have streets of gold made out of pure gold that looked like transparent glass. We just read last night about where the land was stretched from. So it boils down to that people don't really believe in what the man has promised. They don't really believe in what he's promised so they don't have a hope for it. That's why he said, without faith, it's impossible to please him because you must believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Exodus 28 and 31. Because I know some of y'all don't know about this road. Huh? You can look at it in that fashion. Yep. Actual one that get his head cut. It's got to specific all the way live. He gonna get he gonna get sacrificed just like the law say he gonna be sacrificed. 
You know what I'm saying? So, and he had to do it that way so he could put Aaron to bed. You know what I'm saying? Why he got to put him to bed? Because Aaron's name means light. And they brought that light for that time until Yahuwah has saved. Now there's no need. The light's been manifest. Now we got a greater and better way. Come on through. But our people still want to hold to the old way. Exodus 28 and 31. And you shall make a robe of an ephod all of blue. There shall be a hole in the top of it and in the midst thereof. And it shall be a binding of woven round about the hole as it was the hole of a harbinger that it be not rent. And beneath upon the hem of it shall you make pomegranates of blue, purple, scarlet, round about the hem thereof, and bells of gold between them round about, a golden bell of a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate upon the hem of the road round about. I we read it. This is exactly what David got on. Now look who this is for. It shall be upon Aaron to serve. And his sound shall be heard when he go into the Gentiles place before Yahuwah. And when he come out, that he die not. And you shall make a plate of pure gold engraved upon it, like the engravings of a signet, Kadash to Yahuwah. So when you got that, 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 that robe on, it say that you set apart to Yahuwah. And what does the book tell you to always what? Make sure your garments be white, right? What do he say that the fine linen is what? The righteousness of the saints, which is representative of the Ruach, which means you would be what? Kadash to Yahuwah, which means you would be a priest after the order of Melchizedek. And that's why you need to put that garment up. But let's continue. And you shall put it upon a blue lace, that it may be upon the mitre, upon the forefront of the mitre it shall be, and it shall be upon Aaron's forehead, that Aaron may bear the iniquity of Kadash things, which the sons of Yasharal shall hollow in all their Kadash gifts. And it shall always be upon his forehead, that they may be accepted before Yahuwah. And you shall embroider the coat of fine linen, and you shall make the mitre of fine linen, and you shall make the girdle of needlework. For Aaron's sons, you shall make coats, and you shall make with them girdles and bonnets, and you shall make them for esteem and for beauty. And you shall put them upon Aaron, your brother, and his sons with him, and you shall anoint them and consecrate them and sanctify them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. Now, according to this law, David ain't had no business with that on. You know, a lot of people like to grab this verse, too, to say David prayed with his head covered. They don't say nothing about him praying. Do it say anything in there about him praying? They said they went up on that mountain to go praise you, and he had a linen ephod on. That's what it said. But you got to ask yourself, why does the beloved have on a high priest garment? Because he was pointing to you, point to Mashiach, but most importantly, he was pointing to the order of Melchizedek, king and priest at the same time. And the king and priest at the same time who sings praises to his Allah. Mm -hmm. Let's finish this out and and first Chronicles 15. Y'all willing we'll do 16 on tomorrow. We're in verse 28. Thus all Yasharal brought up the ark of the covenant of Yahuwah with shouting, with the sound of the coronet, with trumpets, with cymbals, making a noise with psaltery and harps. And it came to pass as the ark of the covenant of Yahuwah came into the city of David that me that Mikael. The daughter of Saul, looking out the window, saw King David dancing and playing, and she despised him in her heart. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? She seen him. She seen them praising you, who and she hated him for. Yeah, that's all. That's all, though. That's his wife. That's the one he got for the uh, for the uh, for the uh, four skins. He had a color. He had it bring back and forth skins. But you know, hallelujah for Yahoo shine the word. Who are with him? We'll beat us up on tomorrow. Continue looking at singers, and then we got something that's specific. We're with the Levites for Pentecost. But we still got more. But what you see when you look at it is, is that David appointed singers, people to praise Allah. And these people were of the Levites. So when you come around and you look at it according to the priesthood of Melchizedek, Yahoo Shah has appointed these same singers. To sing praise to Elohim. Don't let nobody tell you that there's something wrong with that, or that that shouldn't be done, or that's Christianity, because you're dealing with an embassy. You know what I'm saying? You're dealing with an embassy. It's a blessed thing if it's in your heart to make, because when you sing praise to Elohim, that means you're doing that from a place of joy, if you're doing it with understanding. And joy is one of the fruits of the Ruach. 
So how is you gonna tell somebody who's singing with joy to you who that they out of pocket when in reality you're telling that person that that seed has fell into either uh what I'm looking for fallow ground amongst the stones or uh or to the wayside because if it fell into a good heart they would have full strong understanding on why they were singing with joy. But again, I bless y'all at the house of Yahuwah, in the name of Yahushua. Yahuwah willing, we'll pick it up on tomorrow at uh, 1 30 p.m. and go from there. And Yahuwah willing until that time. Yeah, I didn't think I would take that long on, on chapter nine.